just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar. It feels like round two, but it is round one still, and what a round one it was. Now, listen, if you got your tips right this week, you don't know rugby league, okay? Let's just put it out there because it was an absolute bloodbath for tipsters. Only, I think, one or two favourites won, or even one, Cowboys. Cowboys, Parramatta. And Parra. So Cowboys and Parra are the only favourites that won. It was a massacre, but that is great for Rugby League that so many underdogs won. But before I get into it, huge announcement, guys. We are doing a live show on KO this Sunday from 2.45 till 3.45. We have two Origin guests. We're going to all, we're all flying up to the Dolphins. We'll be at KO Stadium doing the live show in that corporate box whilst overlooking the field. But that show is going to be live stream on KO. So set your alarms right now. 2.45 till 3.45, Sydney time, I'm pretty sure. And we're going to have two Origin guests on the podcast. Make sure to tune in, guys, because we want to show KO what the bloke community is all about, baby. Make it a big deal. Make it uh, highly viewed so that we can do more low sh live shows like this on KO uh, and get big guests that are Origin stars on it. Uh, the Root, he's back from Vegas. A bit of a... Kevin Nangama this morning, though? Uh, managed to drown my laptop in my bag this morning, so that's good. So I'll be, uh, you'll have to be my eyes and ears today, Kempi. Oh, I gotcha, mate. I gotcha, uh, Timmy. Good to be back, mate. New season, same storylines. Oh, he's all chipper. He's all chipper. He was talking premierships before the camera started rolling, so let's just keep that uh, noted. S same as every year, mate. Ray just come out and just turkey slap all the haters. <laughs> 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 Timmy the turkey slap man <laughs> Holy shit Turkey slap Tim Holy Hamiso A.K.A. Hammy Yeah I think that nickname sticks for Timmy Turkey, <laughs> turkey slap Tim, Tim. <laughs> Got a nice ring to it um, Yeah all good over here Can't complain um, Nice dry laptop Ready to go Fresh haircut too Fresh haircut well, I noticed you, so Noticed if, in a few of the comments A few people thought I was actually bald Because I keep wearing a hat all the time So I was like well <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll show him what I got. Got a fresh fade over the weekend. When he so, walked in, uh, I was like, who the fuck's that guy? Yeah. Didn't, yeah. didn't recognise you at the hat. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, uh, still me, guys. So, um, <laughs> don't, I'll tell you don't. what, Kempi, you collect a lot of Dalian points over in Vegas. Having Ooh, one of the best times of the year. Yeah, okay. Pretty impressive. All right, can we get some uh, information gleaned from that statement, please? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Can't oh, except for herpes. Um, <laughs> yeah? there's, a, there's a crane for that, I think. So. Yeah. Also, great... Uh, but, is that the hangover? Is that the hangover? Is mm. it? Yeah. So I was quoting the line. Didn't happen to me. Just quoting the line. Uh, and anyway, guys, apologies. There has been a delay on the CBA merch for the last couple of weeks. There's been mass delays in the port, so it isn't just our goods that have been delayed. But they will be sent out this week. As we speak, they're getting sent out. So please, I cannot wait. Make sure that when you get them, tag us in it, because I would love to see your reaction to uh opening it the feeling of the new kit the new material the new packaging all the little details that we've added to it this uh this time i really cannot wait for you guys to enjoy that some hats have already been sent out yeah, there's a few getting around the harrow mats on the weekend had a few pictures sent to me i'm not even a couple of harrow mats sent unreal. out you reckon yeah. <laughs> oh a couple of harrow mats sent out oh yeah that's one of your best guru one of your best uh now huge announcement huge announcement we got exciting news we are now partnered with Grilled. So is the great Roo. Uh, and uh, Grilled Burger, for Grilled Burger's lovers out there, this is what you need to do. Because this is actually, when they came to me with this idea, I was like, that is in tune with Rugby League. <laughs> uh, every time your team wins, you get a free Grilled Burger the Monday after the game. So here's what you do. You head to the link in the show notes. You follow the prompts, which include picking your footy team and signing up to the Grilled Loyalty Program called Relish. Then when your team wins, you get a two-for-one burger voucher to use on the Monday. So you've heard of Mad Monday. Well, this is Mad Monday. Good. Boom. Good. When the creative thought of that, they were just they walked into the office at Grilled and they just went, boom, it's Monday. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Roo, apologies. About that. <laughs> it's been a tough day for the Roo, tough day for the Roo. So make sure to uh, go to the show notes uh, and sign up to Relish free burger on a monday so that's not right now when you're listening to this monday it's obviously next monday uh your team wins you go into grilled for a free burger maybe take the the missus or the partner on a date you're kidding yeah a quick uh quick question on just the t's and c's there yeah as a, on behalf of all the tigers fans does that still count if you beat the buy on the weekend do you get the <laughs> two for one burger or listen i if i'm being honest i didn't read the t's and c's yep. that 
um, specifically. Yep. But I'll get back to you. Yep. I'll get back Hopefully to you. Hopefully that's a yes because um, been a bit few and far between the old wins for the Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so massive thank you for Grilled for coming on board. Uh, I personally already eat Grilled, love it. I love their chips. I'm usually a, a beef, bacon, egg, lettuce, cheese man with a bit of barbecue sauce. That's what I roll with. Are you, you're a, something serious? Um, uh, yeah, I'm a Simon Says. Simon it's a Says. Good chicken burger. Oh, yeah. Any any faves, boys? Mighty Melbourne. The Mighty Melbourne? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was always a Simon Says man too. Okay. Yeah. Simon Says goes good. Okay, so Simon Says is the, the word <laughs> of the day, eh? That's uh, the rubber has met the road. Um, <laughs> Tire sponsors reach out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now it's uh, Face the Music brought to you by Sports, but let's get straight into the tipping from Vegas. He's back. Any any stories from Vegas, Sammy? Vegas store. Uh, well, we had a, a really close call um, oh, on the roulette mate. tables. The the roulette tables, if you will, uh, <laughs> with the great Rue. Um, I don't know if you want to kind of take the wheel here, Rue, but it, he, he was basically setting up a bit of a content play for one of his CBAs, Sia Wong, yep. over the course of the weekend. Uh, I was the DOP for this particular execution, getting ready to film it. Um, if you want to take it away, Rue, uh, and explain... DOP I'd love is to, Director mate. of Production, correct? Uh, Director of Photography. Photography, so apologies. Yeah. I fucking hate money, so I'd love to tell this story again. Um, <laughs> standing at the roulette table, and I said to Hammy, I said, get your phone out, mate, I'll do a whole Sia Wong thing here, number 11. I had about 70 US in my hand, so Ooh. a bit of nice little bit of picky. Yeah. Um, and as we're explaining what we're going to do on the next roll, I hit Ella go, oh no. And I turn, and number 11 came up on oh. that spin, the one before. So, yeah. yeah, no spoilers, but 11 didn't come up twice. In oh the no. <laughs> yeah. But the Gurusters got up, so that's a good thing. They did. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Look, rough couple of weeks, laptop's gone. The great Wong didn't go through for you. The Got two for one burgers today at Grilled though. Two for one burgers at Grilled. So make sure it's show, link in show notes, guys. Once again, support Grilled. They're supporting us. Go there, sign up. You know, the more people that sign up, it is the better for us in, in regards to, you know, that partnership growing. But let's get to face the music. Hey, speaking of rubber eating the road, I actually went to the, the NASCAR the day after. Wow. The, uh, yeah, that's a that's a real cultural experience. Got to tip is that it one. Like, like, I know I don't know the culture of it and the nuances of it, but yep. like, and look, that's weird for me. I usually know a lot of nuances of sports outside of rugby league. Real culture vulture. Yeah, I am yeah. a culture vulture. I'm a culture vulture. <laughs> yeah. But is it seems like, is it more for the drinking, watching rather than watching the cars just go around in circles? Or they were pretty dialed in. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of mm. headphones on. A lot of they were they were really keen on what was going on. But um, look, I've got to be honest. Even for someone who loves their Sheffield Shield cricket like me, a <laughs> little bit too slow than NASCAR. I think it might be a might be a one and done kind of thing <laughs> okay. for me. Okay. But if you like watching cars turn left for four hours, I could recommend no better event than the, uh, than the NASCAR. So, um, anyway, there you it, go. It, like, settle down, NASCAR fans, in the comments section. Just relax. Just an opinion. Play nice. Play nice. Play nice. Uh, face the music. Now, disappointing to see you guys didn't do it last week. Um, you did put some tips in at the end of last week, but uh, I've decided not to investigate those too hard. <laughs> It was pretty pathetic by everyone, to be honest with you. And I think it was not an accurate reflection of the NRL IQ um, available on this show. So we've let him through to the keeper. Um, but we did put tips in for Vegas. So yes, we did. Manly 36 defeated South 24. And obviously the Chooks 20 defeated the Broncos 10. Uh, Denon, you went the Rabbitohs and the Broncos for a grand total of zero points. Oh. Uh, Matty sucking up to his boss as usual, had the same picks. <laughs> Duck egg for the water boy. Now we get into the real tipsters. Um, surprise, surprise, Guru went with the Roosters, his boys. <laughs> Guru Roosters. Uh, and, yeah, the Guru Roosters, and he had South in the other game, one point. Timmy and myself, uh, we went with Manly in the first game, but the Broncos in game two. So, after round zero, Timmy, Guru, and myself, one point. Denon and Maddie on zero. So, slow start to the year for you boys. <laughs> Very slow start. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Um, that's brought to you by Sportsbet and... There's something big coming. I can't say what it is. I'm nda out of my mind. Honestly, there's lawyers watching right now. But something's coming, so stay tuned. Yeah. Stay tuned for sports bet. Massive thank you as always. Uh, we shot some new content recently, which cannot wait. And obviously, this is not a sports bet jersey. It's just a, a jersey that happens to be blue and yellow. Looks, looks beautiful. Yeah, it looks does. Fantastic, does. Going. Hopefully one day, guys. Hopefully one day. Round, round two uh, picks coming up at the end of the show. Yes, stay well. tuned for that. Stay tuned for three and a half hours for the picks at the end of the show. <laughs> Short show today, mate. It's a more exciting end to the NASCAR. I'll tell you okay, let's get to Team of the Week. Brought to you by Bloke Beer. Make sure to grab a case of Bloke Beer from your local. In every celebration, Slick Legends, IJ Plus Slicker, Bodolo. Uh, beautiful, easy drinking lager. And it is the beer of rugby league, guys. It is the beer of rugby league. Give her a crack if you haven't. Let's get into it. Team of the Week at number one, Sloan. 
Who would have guessed it? What an incredible performance by Sloan. We'll get more into it in the game. Uh, with Sloan, it's just about, all right, that's the standard. That's the standard. Let's stick to it. Uh, Lomax, wow, unbelievable. Talakai at three. But this, we had, honestly, we nearly broke up as a panel over this <laughs> because it was Talakai, Holmes, May, uh, Laybutt that we were all questions on. Uh, we debated deep into the night, uh, all morning, and we ended up settling on Talakai and Laybutt. But if you had May, Holmes, uh, either could have been good. Matty, even a, Matty flipped it and threw water on Guru's laptop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So there was even a shout out to Suli as well. Yes, another, another strong special game. mention. Special yeah. mention. Uh, but we'll get into more of that in the game, guys. At five, we've got Mulatalo. At six, the redemption of Flanagan. Who would have thought? Signed as a nine, goes play six, kills it. <coughs> Unbelievable stuff. Uh, at seven, Fogarty. At eight, Adam Fenuel Blake. Wow, we he's looking good. At nine, Little. How good was it he, to see him play to what we know he can play to? At ten, Junior Paolo. At eleven, it was Timmy Williams Hosking. He nailed it. At eleven, what a game. At twelve, Cartwright. Thirteen, Yo. But honourable mention, Tohu Harris. Um, at fourteen, Nanai. At fifteen, Smithies. But that's Morgan Smithies, not Smithies the Chips. Um, <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chips do go well, though. They did go well on the weekend. Yeah. Uh, at 16, Katoa. At 17, Papa Lee of Canberra Raiders. Veteran fame turning back the clock fame. Uh, <laughs> double fame. It's double, two fames. Two fames. Any, any mentions, any, talk, any talking points there, boys? No, yeah, that's good, Kempi. That's good? Uh, yeah, all good, mate, I think. Don't all go at once. Covered, covered them off well, Kim. Okay, like, thank lot you. Of honourable mentions. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm good at my job. I'm oh, good I'll, at my job. I'll give you an honourable mention to Sean Johnson, who in a week of not a lot of standout sevens, he was on a losing team, but five repeat sets mm. is incredible. We'll get to that talking more a little oh. more later, but that is no mean feat. It makes me furious when I hear yeah. five repeat sets and really no rewards. Anyway, uh, now let's uh, get straight into it. But before we do, the hungriest player of the week for us was Zach Lomax. That is right. Free delivery this week when you use code Lomax. L-O-M-A-X. Boys, for a guy where there were whispers saying that he didn't want to play wing to go out and put on that performance, ironically, it's like, bro, you might be not just a better winger. You might be one of the better wingers in the competition if you can keep this up. The, the well-rounded nature of his game you know, he timed his flick pass as well. Under the high ball, he's, you know, the amount of um, runs out of his own end, the tough stuff. Lomax was outstanding and dare I say, maybe the best game he's had in his career. I thought he was absolutely incredible. Uh, probably the best player on the field, him and uh, Sloan, but I'd maybe, maybe give it to Lomax. Um, and, but it just, just in regards to, there was a lot of chat heading into round one for Lomax. You know, is he happy playing center or wing? This is how you keep the chat silent. You know, a lot of people can sit up, including us, we can sit up here and have our opinions all day and say this should have been this or that should have been that. But at the end of the day, when you perform like that, there's nothing to say. Your actions have said all that needs to be said. <laughs> 260 odd run meters. Uh, he was sensational, Lomax. I, uh, my big fear about him being on the wing was that he was just such a strike weapon for the Dragons. But like Jack Bird is such a run first guy. I, I just wasn't convinced he was going to get any footy out there. I thought Bird was tremendous as well. Their mm. combination was great. He got a heap of ball. I love the couple of times where he roamed and he mm. just popped up on the other side of the field as well. Uh, the Dragons, they're looking like a handful early. Didn't they play like a Flanagan team? That's the, the biggest takeaway from me is they had an identity off the bat. Yep. You know, of course that drag, like any NRL side can have a really good performance. Like they're NRL players, guys. And I know people like to put shit on the lower tier sides. It's like, guys, these are guys are all guns. But what, it, in, you know, really impressed me is that was a team with a Flanagan identity. And that's a team that over the next few weeks, Blake Laurie, Harmsello, Luciano Lelua have got to walk back into that side. Like, <laughs> like you add those three guys to your bench, there's, there's no drop off. It's, yeah. Look, the, the, the question will be look, I think they've definitely, we'll get into it in the preview. Sorry, we'll get into the preview. But it was a really good performance. Anything on Lomax, Lomax? Yeah, just one on him. Uh, coming into the weekend, he was 41 bucks to be the top point scorer for the season. Um, obviously, now he's on the sting, had a great game. He's kicking goals as well. He's into 13 bucks now. Oh, oh just imagine you had a got on him. Yeah. Holy. Holy. 
Um, but yeah, massive congratulations, Lomax. And that's what we want to see. You know, if we ever sound like we're being negative or, or whatever, it's because we want these guys to fulfill their potential. And Lomax should be playing Origin. That's his potential. And hopefully he can get there uh, eventually. Uh, let's get straight into it, shall we? Raiders defeat the Knights. In a Raiders are getting to a point where they're almost storm like in their ability to basically quell the naysayers. Their ability to get up for games that they have apparently no chance in winning is becoming almost a, a lock. You know, like th this is pretty, pretty much the last game they played, they went up to Newcastle and were so close to upsetting Newcastle on a, on a 10 game win streak. They play the next game up in Newcastle and they go a step better. They absolutely dominate the Newcastle Knights. What a performance by the Raiders and Ricky Stewart. I think one of the biggest stories at the Raiders over the last few years is actually Ricky Stewart's journey as a coach and as a person. But Timmy, I'd love to get your thoughts, mate. Yeah, it was like somewhat of a, a carbon copy of last season with the Canberra Raiders where you know, they came into this game as big underdogs. There were question marks around where they were going to score their points. There is still question marks around where they're going to score their points. But the character they showed, the grit that's been, you know, such a big part of their game under Ricky Stewart for the last four to five years in particular, they came out in round one and looked rock hard fit. Mm. They like the forward pack we knew is a big part of what the Raiders are. They're dominant. They dominated the Knights. They didn't look like they broke a sweat in that game. Yeah. They looked in unbelievable shape. Josh Papali'i, as you mentioned earlier, one of the veterans is a great example of that. They completed 90%, 36 from 40 completions. Sure, there's a few tries off kicks early on, but they just pounded the Knights out of the game. The, the Knights were looking for easy points, throwing it wide when it wasn't on. It's exactly what the Raiders want them to do. They won it through the middle. The points came, and you know, as a fan, it was such a joy to watch because there are a lot of critics and you know rightly so looking at the roster mm. going into round one myself included i you know was questioning where points would come from geez it was a gritty effort well it's just it's it's good game planning by ricky stewart to go okay yes it might be a bit of a struggle for us to get some points but i'll tell you what we can do we can put so much pressure on the opposition their mistakes will give us points. And that's exactly what happened. The, the Newcastle Knights just, unfortunately, they crumbled under pressure. They just crumbled. And it, like, I don't know whether that was because the Knights were so poor or the Raiders were so good. What, I, what we do know for sure is that there was an intention from Ricky Stewart to play a very specific style of footy, and they nailed it. Um, it's almost like what the, the Maroons do in Origin each year, where they just come out and go, we will play high percentage football. We will, we will complete sets. You know, we will kick early, all these sorts of things, and go, you will make mistakes. We will not take the foot off the throat. We might not be the greatest attacking side you've ever seen and have this in incredible creativity in us, but we will not let, you know, let down. We won't beat ourselves Yeah, we much. will play for 80 minutes, and if you falter, we'll capitalise. Yep. You're it. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah, I was very impressed, mate. Uh, I thought, you know, a big thing that stood out for me for, for the, with the Raiders was that, you know, you were missing Elliot Whitehead, you were missing uh, Corey Horsburgh, and the guys that stepped into the starting team. They were arguably your best. Josh Papaliti, um, your mate on the, on the edge, he was sensational. Zach Hosking. Yeah. What about that moment where Zach Hosking tackled Phoenix Crossley? <laughs> mate, honestly, we're in Inception. Yeah. That's, that's Inception 2. Glitch in the Matrix. That's a, that's a trailer for Inception 2, I think. <laughs> and then it's got Timmy up giving his opinion on it. <laughs> Turkey slap Inception. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, mate, I, I agree with you in everything you said, boys. Um, it was a really good performance. Some key standouts for me. Mate, I just love Papali'i. You know, I think we've all kind of been talking about Papali'i, especially in the last 12 months of almost like a grizzled veteran that has earned the ride off into the sunset. Like, mate, you've been incredible. Thank you so much for everything you've done. And I guess, now I don't know if this would have lit a fire under his, uh, under his butt, but maybe it did where he almost felt like, hang on a sec, I've got a bit more to offer. I'm not, I'm not out the door yet. Yes, I am getting a little bit older. Uh, and I think that him coming back eight kilos, you know, uh, had, had he, having lost, lost eight kilos, geez, you could see it. He's, that's the most mobile he's looked since he played on the edge for the Raiders earlier in his career, maybe even more mobile. And some of the plays, like this is the sign of a good footy player where, you know, he had a, a style of play where he could have big moments when he was a big bopper of, you know, 115 kilos or whatever, loses eight kilos and has a different style of play to have big moments like a kick chase. And it's like, that's just a good footy player that has so many weapons in his arsenal that he can affect games in different ways. And he's been playing for like 
what, 15 to what, 12 years now. And the beauty is going to be, I would imagine, Timmy, in three or four weeks, you're probably gonna, only going to need Papa Lee to play 30, 40 minutes. And, and it's going to be dynamic. And it could be the best, whether it's off the bench or starting, it could be the best 35 minutes week in, week out from a yep. front row because he's that effective. As you said, he looks so fit. That kick chase where he, him and Tommy Starling smacked Marju, that typified Josh Papley and what he, as he said, can be like 31, 32 this year, hasn't missed many games over the years, super durable, had every right to sort of be in the back end of his career, play that 25 to 30 minutes, have a bit of an impact. But like, no, he's going, no, I'm still one of the best front rows in the competition. That chase for cool. Tommy to jam Marju and then Papa Crazy. to come over to Tommy to go whack, they're sending about three metres back in goal, pretty late in the game. That was where you're going... Ricky's just got these blokes humming and wanting well, For play. me, that was essentially a match winner yeah. for me because it just it just basically kept that pressure on. And what I loved about it, it was a mix of two. So you've got a little fella tackling a big Marju with a great technique and you've got a big fella kick chasing, like two things that are almost the hardest parts of their game. So Starling tackling big fellas, that's the hardest part of his game. Josh Papaliki, big kick chases late in the game, hardest part of his game. That's all attitude. That's not like, you can't teach that. That's not something that is a skill set. That's purely, do I respect my teammates and do I respect my coach? That's that play. And it's not a thing where they sit in the video session on Monday and Ricky Shuk goes, oh, big papa, like you should have been chasing for that one. Like, no, he's a front rower. Like, of course you got to push up and you try and hold that line, but mm. he doesn't need to be the one no. ripping and tearing up there 50 metres in front of everyone. Yep. That was just him going, no, no, I want this more than anyone else. Kempi, I've got my nut trucker hat on today and I think there's a new mascot for nut truckers in <laughs> Canberra Raiders. Morgan Smithies. My Mate. God. He loves it. Like, seriously, uh, what, again, what I love with the Raiders at the moment is, okay, can they push for a premiership? I personally don't think so right now. But how often do we talk about clubs and DNA and culture? When the Raiders sign someone, it's usually someone that fits what they're looking for. Whereas some of these other teams, and we'll get to talking to them eventually, like it's almost just a throw a net out and just let's try and drag in the best players we can. Whereas the Raiders are building somewhere, they're recruiting specific players that suit exactly what the Raiders is all about. They're recruiting tough bastards. I, I remember early on in the preseason, probably like January, we were talking about Smithies <coughs> on beers and break even from a Supercoach perspective, mm. and Guru was saying he'd looked at a lot of his highlights from England. He goes, mate, I don't know if he's going to have much to offer outside of a bit of work rate. Like, there's not going to be offloading, there's not going to be tackle busting on what I've seen. And I said, yeah, fair enough, mate. And I'm just like, but work rate should be enough for him to mm. to fit this Raiders team and, and impact in the NRL. Comes out, zero tackle bus, zero offloads, but 46 tackles with one miss mm. and 14 runs in his first game in the NRL. Crazy. Different climate, climate coming off the back of the Aussie summer, like still, I know it was a Thursday night game, but the weather's still toasty, coming from England, and that's his first hit out. It's crazy. And, and that's the thing, like, you don't need – like, sides are all about balance. You need dogs mm. like this that – you know, are they going to have, like I spoke about it on Friday, but Corey Hawes was probably going to give you more big moments and he also gives you the work. But what Morgan Smith is going to give you is everything he does is going to be eight or ten, eight out of ten or better in the quality of his work. So the tackling technique, the wrestle, the runs he does. So he's not going to have these, I mean, he might eventually get there and develop that in his game. But you don't need every player to be a guy that's going to set the world alight. You need dogs in the middle and, there to get and through the work. The other thing that I think we've dearly missed in recent years, and I was so glad to see it, his ball playing looked pretty good. Yep. You know, it's not top five, six, seven um, ball playing locks in the NRL, but it was enough that he can be a really valuable link man playing big minutes for us. You know, off the back of one performance, you know, we need to see it the next few weeks. But when Corey Horsburgh comes back, Corey could shift into that front rotation and he could be a big minute lock. That's if, a scary if, front if row rotation. With and he said he doesn't necessarily, he doesn't have to have 20 runs a game. He probably will because he's an animal, um, Smithies. But if he can have 10 runs a game, be a good link man, make his tackles. What do you reckon a guy like him signs for in the NRL? Well, does he sign for less to get opportunity? Yeah, to I, reckon. Yeah. I reckon. I reckon. Because it's a value signing, if yeah. so. Yeah, because you, there wouldn't be clubs clamouring for a guy like yeah. that because. You know, you look at your Tohu Harris's, your Isaiah Yo's, your Murray's. It's genuine. Like, I'd, I reckon he'd probably be on around two two fifty max. Oh, really? Max, yeah. I reckon a bit more just because he would have been on a good wicket in the Super League off the back of what he's done and his success. So I think I would have had to pay a bit for him. I think their salary caps are quite, like, a bit smaller, though. Yeah. So what's a lot for them mm. wouldn't be a lot for over here. Yeah. 
I, 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 look, I could be wrong. Maybe it's around 300. I don't know. But I'd, I'd be very surprised if it was more than 300. I reckon around two, two. Yeah, I was going to say sort of th- three to four. Man, if they've got him for 250. Uh, I would outrageous. have thought he'd be three to four, but I, I don't know. I'm yeah. just yeah. guessing. Yeah. We're, I mean, we're all just guessing here, guys, so we could be absolutely wrong. Hamiso, aka Hammy. Yeah. What's going on, brother? Well, I, I couldn't believe in this game. Everyone on this panel was saying at the start of the season, where's all the points going to come from for the Raiders? And then they came out and had their first 13 plus win in <laughs> over a yeah. season and a half. So Raiders like. Yeah. Uh, nine bucks for those playing at home if you had of for the uh, for the thirteen plus, but that was so impressive. You've spoken about their forwards a lot and that, how how good they were, a lot of good kick chase and stuff. But how about the boat kicking it? Fogarty, eight hundred meters, he kicked four. Got right. him the team of the week as the halfback as well. Um, I thought he had a had a had a huge game. Yeah, the first twenty, I was like, Fogarty, you left your kicking boots at home, brother. Yep. Uh, and then he just got his eye in. And look, that's you know that is to be expected. I guess it's round one, but you know you're so keen to see. Because, like, I was so excited to see Fogarty start the year because this is fully his team now. Like, there is no other kit person in that spine. And so when that first 20 minutes came around, I'm going, oh, shit, this, this could be a very long night for yeah. the Raiders if they can't get their eye in. But I wasn't giving him enough, I guess, grace of saying, it's fucking round one. Of course he's going to take some time to get his eye in. He got his eye in and he kicked the living shit out of him. Seriously. <laughs> Not physically. Yeah. Ball, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> been in the kickboxing dojo down the corridor here. Yeah, him and Ricky Stewart. <laughs> yeah. Bloody kickboxing each other. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's halves partner. Welcome to first grade Ethan Strange. Here's Tyson Frizzell to deal with for the oh. next hour and a half. Miss oh. me with that. Yeah, I, I think that there was a couple t- – like, I, I wasn't as um, – concern's the wrong word. Again, round one, he's a rookie. I wasn't as concerned with that because we see halves get, miss that line – each week. It was actually earlier when Kalen Ponga ran over him. Mm. But I was like, ooh, that, that's something you've got to sort out. Like kick return, you've got to sort that out. And Kalen Ponga, obviously not massive. Um, but outside of that, like you don't need the bloke to set the world right. Like he got no. through his work, he did his job. He didn't look out of depth. He didn't look like he wasn't supposed to be there. Uh, mate, all in all for me, that's good enough for me from Strange. That's it, all I want. It couldn't have been like, I mean, it could have been a better performance, but it was a great, great early signs from the Raiders. Being that glass half empty, I still have the same concerns about points. Like, mm. so we completed 36 of 40. We dominated the middle. We had, I shouldn't say everything go our way because we earned the right, you know, to, to win 13 plus and, and be in this position. But like, when we did have a lot of ball in the first half, there were tries off kicks. Danny Levi had that really soft try just after half time. but there's one try in the first half. I'll be honest, watching as a Raiders fan, you watch footy games and you go, we had so much ball in that first half. We struggled to capitalise, scored the Hosking try off the kick. And I thought, oh, this has got to turn at some point. And we didn't take their foot off the throat. So it didn't happen. The trials were the same. We put a few points on in the trials. None of it came off the back of our spine or our outside backs, give or take a bit of Matty Timiko magic here and there. But with Jordan Rapana, not a noted ball playing fullback, it's fine and we'll... If we can keep doing this, so beaten, completing anywhere near that, I do worry still about where points are going to come. Yeah, from. I think the um, the Hudson, me, me personally, and I've, I said this for a few weeks ago, the way the Raiders are going to make a dent mm. is the Hudson Young try. It's through the middle. It's Hudson Young that scored that try. All the offloads from Emily Gula yep. back inside. I think that, that that is a strong point. So why not just just lean into it and so high you know quick play the balls offloads all through the middle a bit similar to way para played i know they ended up scoring the edges sometimes but they had so many offloads i think that there's just no way at the very least in the first 14 to 16 rounds that they're going to click quick enough to be a slick out the back kind of team i think it's going to if it is going to happen it's going to happen late in the season where everything kind of just falls into place for him until then i think the game plan has to be just power through the middle and try and get points up. I way. mean, the reality is, I, I don't think they've been a slick out the back team for six years. No, no, they've been they, relevant they really the entire haven't. time. It's yeah. almost like I look at it and go, "Fuck, they play on orthodox. How are they going to do this?" But they seem to do it every year. Yeah, it is. Um, and as, yeah, yeah. I just, sorry, man, I was just say, you know, your four packs where your power is. That's where your strength is so clearly in this side. Just send everything through the middle. Yeah, out, out muscle them, get the momentum. Sweet, maybe a few tries of games will come off kicks, but. It might be all we need. Yeah. And, and I, I think sometimes, and I think you can see Ricky is probably leaning in towards that, but like people almost get uh, romantic about, oh, look out, look at the Rabbitohs out the back yeah. or the Broncos, and they think, oh, we've got to do that too. Whereas I think with the Raiders, it's like, let that come naturally. I don't think, don't force it where, oh, we better have this really slick out the back play. Because unfortunately right now, you just don't have that type of outside back or in the fullback or even at six at the moment. 
if it comes naturally, allow it to come naturally. Um, it's an incredible performance. Obviously, it's, uh, you know, I still want to see more from the Raiders. It is round one. And we'll get that disclaimer out of the way, guys. It's round one. We understand that. Uh, I, I agree. I still do have concerns around them putting points on uh, against better opponents. I thought the Knights were really poor. Uh, but at the end of the day, you come out round one, what else can you ask for the – like if we're going to sit here and go, oh, I'm worried about the points, not that you're doing this, but oh, I'm worried about this, worried about that. It's like what else – then you, if you're the Raiders or even the Raiders fans, you're like what else do you want them to do? Yeah. They go up to Newey, they fucking complete they it like 90% up. and touch up the Knights. Like, okay, so what, what evidence could we give you for us – for you to go that was great and – you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and I think – I said the exact same thing at the start of last year. I probably said it the year before as well. Because we're going to be so dominant through the middle and, and lean on our attack coming through that, second phase play. We've got yeah. these terrific <coughs> offloading forwards. Mm. Just look to get that arm free. You, you'll have Savage sniffing in around the ruck. Jordi Rapana, a great support player, doesn't stop in around the ruck. Points will come off the back of that. Yeah. Got to look for the offload. Yeah. Just on Savage, I thought we saw some really positive signs the other night. Oh, he looked great. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've, I've said from day dot, I think he's a winger and I think he kind of proved that. On the weekend, I liked him on the wing. He had some really great moments. What I love the most about Xavier, though, is that as a young fella, you know, this young flyer on the wing and there's a lot of hype around him, the Knights tried to absolutely bash him and he just kept coming. Like, he just kept turning up and he got rewarded for it at the end of the game with that try. And that's kind of, as a winger, you know, and he's going to be way better than me and play way more footy than me. But, you know, if you just keep yourself in the game, those moments seem to happen for you. And you can't explain why. You can't you can't sit there and go, oh, this is why I scored three tries this game or two tries that game. But you'll ask most wingers, wingers way better than me, it's just ba basically staying in the game. If you go and sit on your wing and you don't get involved, for some reason, bizarre reason, the tries just don't happen. And people go, oh, well, obviously you're not getting involved. Yeah, but you would, you would think that being on the wing more often would mean more tries because there's going to be more ball out to you. And if you're in the middle, you're not going to get the ball. Uh, I thought Z Savage did a really good job at just staying in the game, even though things weren't going fully his way with them trying to bash him the whole time. Um, but yeah, great performance by the Raiders. Super exciting this year for them. Uh, Want to see more. I, at the moment, I still don't have them in the eight. But I tell you what, they genuinely might be the worst side to play <coughs> for any team because there's going to be a lot of teams that go to the Raiders and sit there and go, um, oh, look at our side on paper and, you know, look at the, the spine. It's probably not as good as ours. And they'll get ambushed. And I do see the Raiders ambushing a lot of sides this year. Saturday, 3 p.m., Tigers going down to Canberra. Ooh. Thank you, Ooh. How are you feeling? Speaking of ambushes, um, <laughs> the bus down the, uh, down the Hume there. Uh, look, uh, but, you know, not, not great, um, if I've been honest. But, uh, you know, the Raiders, the Raiders they're, all, they're on one. They looked really good on the weekend. So it's going to be a tough challenge for our boys to start the season. But uh, Benji's had another week off just to get the game plan right, you know. Um, certainly wouldn't be sleeping on us, Timmy, over there. Yeah, we'll see, mate. <laughs> Talk to me in a week. Yeah. Okay, now to the Knights. Um, yeah, unfortunately, there's really no way to sugarcoat it. It was an extremely disappointing performance from the Knights. Uh, the, uh, the best thing for me to take away from it, it's round one. It's round one. You know, these are long, long seasons. Uh, all you have to do is look to the Knights last year where, you know, they were sitting 14th or 15th at one stage and they went on that run. I will say, though, that – and look, I don't think the Knights are doing this, but – if you think that's going to happen again, the chances are really slim. You go, you do that again where you struggle at the start of the year and then you go on this crazy run. The thing I would guess I was the most um, disappointed about, I just, their forward pack, I just didn't see that same level of newy grit that we'd become accustomed to towards the back end of last year. Um, I thought that in attack, they were trying to play round 25 footy, not round one footy. It was like, Let's hit the ground running, guys. Let's be as slick as we were towards the end of the year. Uh, some shining lights. I thought Frizzell was outstanding. Uh, you know, so that's a good thing that he's still in, you know, uh, top nick. I thought Kai Pierce paul came on and every time he got the ball, it was danger. There was danger, which was something that I was struggling with. Guru, how did you see the Knights going? Just got to hold the football. Mm. 50, I, I think it's 56% completion rate first half. Yeah. Like, like, with all due respect to Canberra, I, I, like, I, if Newcastle would have played the game that Canberra did in the first 30 minutes, I think they could have run away with that. I really do. But they didn't. Canberra did, so full credit to the Raiders. But I'll tell you what, the Newcastle Knights, they'd want to sort this out quickly because they go to North Queensland next week. Oof. They then go to 
they take on Melbourne at home. Then they go to New Zealand to play the Warriors. Then they've got the Dragons, who are looking right. that perform really good. So what has turned what looked like a reasonably decent yeah. draw to start the season has all of a sudden turned into a pretty fucking tough one, to be honest with you. And their forward pack, mate, I just thought they lacked a little bit through the middle. And when I watched those Cowboys last night, oh. it could be scary this weekend. Super explosive. Um, just looking at my notes here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, clear like note after the first 20 minutes was Knights have got to calm down keep it simple and build a foundation for the next 60 minutes um, I, I just think that at no point in that first 20 minutes did I feel like they were building a foundation for the rest of the game and they've got to sort that out because not only does their draw look way tougher than it did before the start of the season but that this Tyson Gamble Hastings uh, Cogger situation it actually may become a curse rather than a blessing because it's going to start putting pressure on positions and you don't want to start switching too early, but at the same time, you do have to make changes. So it could get worse before it gets better. Well, you're going to have Jaden Braley available over the next two to three weeks, I believe it is. So when he comes in, what do you do then? I mean, mm. it looked to me like Phoenix played a bit of 13 the other day and Cogger sort of jumped into nine and whatnot. Too many chefs in the kitchen. Mm. It was, it was just too much. Um, I, and I'm, I'm not quite sure what the answer is. I, I think the pressure will mount quickly on Cogger coming in at 5'8". Um, I'm keen to see how Tyson Gamble responds over the next few weeks. But, yeah, there's going to be a, damn, a few very good footballers that are going to have to miss out on this night side because they can't just keep trying to balance everyone in there. It's just not going to work. Yeah. I think, you know, we've seen that in other squads where they, they take almost the easier option rather than the hard option of... Yep. Specific players selected for a specific game plan. Uh, and look, I, I guess, I, you know, I, I kind of see what they were trying to do with Cogger at, you know, 14 because he could cover the halves and he was okay at, at nine. But I think they're probably going to have to get to a point where they just got to make a hard call on someone. It's unfair. Someone's going to be super upset, but make the hard call and just go with it. And for me, you know, I've watched them play full strength one trial against Melbourne and I've watched them play this game. The best 20 minutes the Knights played across those two games was when Hastings and Cogger on the field together mm. against Melbourne, I thought. Yeah, like, to be honest, I... Well, not to be honest, I said it. Uh, so I don't even need to be honest, it's a fact. <laughs> um, I thought that they were too similar, Hastings and Cogger. So, yeah. But I agree with you, mate. I think that that might be... And I feel sorry for Gamble, but I probably like Gamble... We'll put it this way. Out of all of those guys, who's a better 14? Gamble's the best 14. Um, you know, then obviously what happens with Braley and, and Phoenix Crossland... Uh, but, oh man, they do look more direct when Cogger is in a ball-playing role. So uh, if I'm O'Brien, I'm making that decision sooner rather than later because you can't afford too many rounds to get away from you at the start of the year. Oh, I think he'll pick Gamble again this week. Uh, I think until his hand is forced with the Braley decision, I think he'll wait to make that decision Yeah, until then. Which is, pro which is fair. I, like, I understand the argument of like those boys were the ones that went on the 10-game streak for sure. But I think the first few trials in round one and two is I don't think they're that established where they're protected from being replaced yeah. if you're the Knights. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be overly concerned if I was the Knights. It was a very disappointing performance. But, <clears throat> you know, I think the difference between these two teams was and you could tell the way they approached the game and the way they – the style of footy they played. Ricky Stewart had his boys much more – Playing round one footy. Mm. Adam O'Brien and the Knights weren't playing round one footy. It is, round one footy is very different to round six and round 12, round 18, round 25. Mm. Round one, we saw it across the competition. Attacks are clunky. It doesn't just click like that. And, you know, the attack's smooth. The Knights are such a massive momentum team. They'll get on a roll at some point this season. They'll string wins together and they'll look at world beads when they do. That does not happen from round one. They, to me didn't look like they wanted to get up for the fight in the middle and maybe that was more of a credit to the Raiders and the footy that they played. They just wanted to go around us and, and beat us on the edges as they did even in the finals last year and mm. as if they were going to um, start off where they left off last season. That does it never happens mm. in rugby league. I just thought they went wide way too early, thought they were going to cruise through our edges. <coughs> our defence was up for it, we completed, we belted them in the middle. They'll learn a lot from it, the Knights. Mm. And I think they go, no, no, we got, I hate to use the word, but probably a little bit complacent, mm. thinking they were going to do it a little bit easily. Could be completely wrong. And apologies if I am, but they, they didn't look up ready. They didn't look up for the fight to me. 
What would you go in with the Cogger, Braley, Phoenix, Crossland, Hastings? I, I'm giving Gamble the first month, okay. three to four weeks. I just think off the back of what they did last year, that remarkable run, Gamble has earned the right to get first crack at it. Mm. And I also hate the idea of chopping and changing halves two, three rounds into the season. Give him a month. If it's not working, slot Cogger in there and change it up. I just think it's harsh on what was such a good Newcastle side for about 10 rounds to end last season, and Gamble was a key part of that. Now, I'm not convinced that Gamble is the better fit for that side than Cogger, but I do think he's earned the right to get a month worth it at making at winning the spot. Yeah. It's, oh. like, but what message does that send? Put it this way. Jack Cogger, in reality, was a backup halfback coming from Penrith, and he's mm. had chances in the NRL, and he's never really nailed down that spot. Gamble was sensational. The Knights won, what, nine in a row or something last season, made it to a you know, second week of finals. What sort of message is that sending going? Round one next year, one bad game, you're out, mate. Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be doing it this week, uh, but it, I would be look. Uh, because to put it this way, in all the trials I've seen, I would probably say Cogger has been their best mm. half. Plus round one, obviously you come on at, at at nine. I don't know whether I would be con, uh, dropping. Like let's say you know I would definitely be giving Gamble round two. I would. I wouldn't say, like, if you play bad, you're definitely going to get dropped. But at the same time, it would be on the table for me at this stage just because in all the games I've seen him play this year, he's been okay but not great or not good. Not, he hasn't played good, good footy. Um, so I would basically be going definitely selective round two because I agree with you. He's earned the right. He's played well last year. Hasn't been bad this year at all. Then I'd be looking at him in round two. Then basically round three would be where I'm getting to the do or die position, which is – Relatively similar to what you're saying. Yeah, I, I think if three. they go 0 from 3 and he's underperformed by round 4, all right, you make the move for sure. Yeah, but yeah, I wouldn't be dropping him for round 2. Would yeah. you consider it this, this round? Not this round, no, yeah, no, no. That would be super unfair. And it would be bad for team morale. I think a Jaden Braley return is going to force a hand, though. Mm. Unfortunately, you know, Phoenix Crossland um, had a really poor game. And, and it, he was a really example of, like, he was trying too hard. Like, I loved his line speed. and Line you know, speed was phenomenal. But... Missed 10 tackles. Yeah. And so it's like, I get it and I love it. And it's it's why we love Phoenix Crossland. But sometimes you've just got to go take a step back and go, let's just get, I'm just going to do my job. And sometimes your job is, sometimes it's line speed, but sometimes it's more about making sure the front row next to you is up with you. That's more your job. Um, and so that's just the balance I think Phoenix has got to find of. It's like all the number nines in our game. They're so fucking tough. They're so gritty and they just love it so much. Mm. Sometimes you just got to say, mate, just take a little step back and just build that foundation. So it's like what I said with Reese Walsh uh, last year in Origin. Mate, don't even think about a big play for the first 40 minutes because that's how you build. And, and all, all your first 40 minutes is about is just work for the team. And that's uh, that, the best way to uh, build a foundation into a game. And I think Crossland could have hopefully th this game, you know, next week coming up, that's what he does where he goes, you know what, first 40 minutes, it's purely about doing my job at a 9 out of 10, everything that I do. And then as the game unfolds is when I can try to make these kind of big plays. Um, but with all that being said, you have to remember, it's round one, super long year, guys. Like the Knights have plenty of time. They have the cattle. You know, I wouldn't be panicking just yet. But it was a disappointing performance and not not even just the result like Raiders beating them is not it's just I did think that their forward pack wasn't as aggressive as I thought that would be yeah I was having a look at their side uh on Saturday I sort of went back and had a look at it and you know I, I thought that Dylan Lucas he's fantastic on the edge I watching Kai piss Paul in the second half I don't know if he's ready for an 80 minute role I think he will be over the next few weeks mate if they're lacking stuff through the middle I would seriously consider moving Tyson Frizzell in there mm you got two edges that can play at a high click out there with Kaipis Paul get and Get some Lucas. speed through the middle. Get some speed through the middle. Because they, did look, a bit, they yeah. did look a bit slow through the middle. I, I reckon there's – like, if the Cowboys pack plays like they did yesterday, this week coming against that Newcastle pack, mm. they could blow them away through the middle. Mm. It's gonna, they're going to have to stand up. Yeah. it's. I mean, you'd hope they would because of, of being dominated the way yeah. they were dominated. I, I don't mind. It's one of the things where obviously you want Frizz on the edge and that's where he plays best footy, but what's best for this team? And he said Pierce Paul looked good in a small sample size on the weekend. He looked good in the trials. We've seen his highlights out of the UK. He looks like a terrific mm. athlete. Maybe the best best is having Do those two on the edge. you like, you know, 
20 or 30 minutes on an edge and move him into a middle? Could he do that or is that too much work for his? For I'd like, be okay with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And especially whilst you're trying to transition Kai Piss Paul into yeah. being um, a, a big minute guy, I'd be okay with that. Mate, yeah. I, I, I thought that try that uh, we, we, we spoke about in the green room before, the try that Jackson Hastings scored late. <laughs> green room. Fucking watch Zach Hosking in defence. He's got Jackson Hastings. He doesn't even look at Jacko. He's just looking at Kai Pierce Paul yeah. because he's just so Present. big. Yeah. His presence is just so much. You see Jackson, who, with all due respect to Jacko, he's not the fastest guy over 10 metres. He had all the time in the world because Zach Hosking did, didn't even look at him. Yeah. Didn't mm. even give him the time of day. Um, and, you know, even that offload to Kalen Ponga, that actually landed that offload. It was the, uh, the Raiders that knocked the ball out of Kalen Ponga's hand. Um, shout out to uh, Dan Gagai. Like, even if things aren't going the night's way, he still just rips and tears for his. Like, <laughs> is there ever a game where you go, oh, Gagai's didn't have a red hot no. track here? It's unbelievable. Um, touching on the New South Wales Cup, a couple of big watches there Chevy Stewart and so Chevy Stewart at fullback for the Raiders and Will Price, the Pommy at 5'8 for the Knights, both had big games. Carved it up, Chevy. Yeah. Yeah. Great to hear. That's yeah. really, really good exactly to hear. Exactly what we wanted to see, wasn't it? Yeah. Go back, mate. Bide your time in New Wales Cup, kill it there, your time will come. Because he could have easily have been super disappointed at kick rocks mm. because sometimes you can read headlines and go, I'm the fullback this year, they need a fullback, I'm the guy. Goes back and has a blinder. Yeah. Great attitude, Dave. And this is the whole thing. We're, you know, we're so busy talking about Hastings, Gamble and Cogger. <laughs> if you've got Will Price from Reserve Grade playing 5 8, doing good things down there <laughs> as well. Yeah. He'll throw his hat in the ring. Yeah. Yeah, very true. So, look, disappointing, but round one, there's. Every reason, I mean, you just look at last year, they bounced back massively. Uh, anything else to add, mate? No other ones. Marju had a rip in a tear as well. Yeah. Um, he got over 200 metres as well. Him and Gagai were probably the two that had a rip in from the back five. But no, disappointing. Too many errors. Uh, they had to make 70 more tackles than the Raiders as well. Um, good, simple round one footy. Complete those sets. Complete the sets, baby. Get to the end. Complete the sets. Yeah. Uh, now, power play of the week. After all that chatter about Newey. The power play of the week is, and this is brought to you by LDV T60. It's one of the most powerful utes in its class, possessing 160 kilowatts of grunt. Power play of the, play of the week is Josh Papali'i. That kick chase, that's all power, baby. That's all power <laughs> in the bonnet. That's 160 kilowatts of pure grunt, Papali'i grunt. Uh, getting the job done there. We've already spoken about it. So, um, yeah, what an incredible play. The LDV T60 has 160 kilowatts of grunt, which makes it one of the most powerful utes in its class. The LDV is a sharply priced option from 36990. Drive away for ABN holders during the LDV 2023 plate clearance, making it ideal for those considering buying a new ute or even those considering buying a secondhand competitor. At that price, why go secondhand when you can come, can, when you can have a brand new LDV? All righty. Um, I'm pretty sure that is... Okay. Now, on to the next game. Sharkies defeat the Warriors 16-12. to 12. <clears throat> I had the Warriors 13-plus heading into this game. And they opened the game up, and I'm going, mm. Kempi, you are a genius. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, obviously, Sharks. If you, Probably the most Craig Fitzgibbon performance I've seen from the Sharks. And... That is exactly what they needed to start the year. A lot of people, a lot of shark haters are going to sit there and go, <laughs> oh, you know, it's, it's the Warriors and, you know, they aren't normally in a top eight. That's a top eight side. Away from home, you can't tell me the Warriors aren't a top eight side. They got the scalp. They got it done. Was it super ugly? Yes. Was their attack really clunky? Yes. But guess what? The, guess what wins premierships? Defence. Defense. Boom. I was going to say the Roosters. <laughs> oh, 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 oh wow really uncouth there uh sharkies sharkies yeah sorry i was gonna start in the wires um mate we've constantly for the last two years been talking about this cray fitzgibbon dna and i've been saying for ages we've never fucking seen it we have not seen it until this game if you if i had to highlight a 15 minutes that was the most impressive from the entire round one it would have been the warriors first 15 minutes oh how on earth Cronulla hung in that? Mm -hmm. And the Warriors weren't giving them a sniff. I think you mentioned before, SJ, five force dropouts. We'll yeah. get to that soon, but... Shit! Can we get to it now? <laughs> I hate that rule! <laughs> are, we, are we doing that now? Let's do it! Let's, Let's do, do it now. It. Let's just get it I cannot way. wait to see in 10 weeks' time the lack of importance of the force dropout. It's so. the worst rule ever. Yeah. So you're the attacking team. You do everything right. 
You say, mummy and daddy, I've been a good boy. You get down to the attacking set. You go, look, I'm being a good boy. Then mummy and daddy, they spank you. They don't give you a lolly. You get a spank from mummy and daddy, you're like, mummy and daddy, I was a good boy. I got all the way down there. I got a repeat set and I get a frigging short drop out for my frigging troubles. Oh, I know you don't plan this shit too. It's fucking <laughs> Well, stop spanking me, mummy and daddy. I bloody, I bloody being a good boy. Is daddy PVL? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who Daddy is. He's a shadowy figure in the shadows. Um, mate, I hate this rule. Why are we rewarding the defensive side that's getting dominated? Why are we not rewarding how hard it is to roll a ball in and get a repeat set and the effort it takes to get it done? Hate the new rule. I, literally in every single, nearly every game of all my show notes, it literally says, I hate the new dropout rule. I hate it too because like... You're not getting entertainment. You're getting a kick in the air and then a heap of guys jump in the air and paws going everywhere. It's shit. And then it's, it's, fucking lottery. Lottery. Yeah. it's a shit product to yeah. watch. Like you, you just, you're just watching just bodies come together and it's a, basically it's a gamble. Yeah. Not a Tyson gamble, an actual gamble. Yeah. With, with a, an attacking <laughs> side as good as the Warriors, when Sean Johnson has five repeat sets and they scored, what, two tries in this game, there should be more points coming off the back of this. I don't know how many of the five forced dropouts ended up in the hands of the Sharks, but it's just like we, we went very deep into it in the preseason when these rule changes came through, but it's just like it, it takes the reward away from one of the biggest skills in rugby league, and that's forcing a repeat set. It's such a shame. I, I said at the very least, have some sort of punishment and at least make it a seven tackle set. Like mm. you have to be punished somewhat if you go for the short dropout and it falls short or it goes out on the full. Like, ah, uh, it's a shocker. I don't get why the repeat set team gets punished by not getting the ball back, but the dropout team gets like no punishment. <sighs> it doesn't make any sense that, to me. That's not a bad shout. That's the first time I've heard that one. If you take a short dropout, you give up seven tackles. Mm. That's punishment, it, it is much better than what they've got, but I still don't think the punishment is harsh enough. Reward the attacking team. It's, yeah, like it's they've ridiculous. Done, they've mixed everything in that is good about rugby league. Attacking footy that gets you down to their end, a delicate kicking game, and a strong kick chase. Like, like a, a seven tackle set is more of a punishment, but you're defending on your line. You're not getting momentum. You're not no, taking it. It's none. the easiest spot on the field to defend. It doesn't do anything. I think we said it, said it maybe a couple of weeks ago, but... You know, when they used to kick out in the full and they'd win a penalty or whatever it was, they literally kick it back 10 metres to the 20-metre mark rather than the 10 to get yep. that space to attack. Yeah, it's it's strange. And look, I'm sure someone might look and go, well, actually, they regathered three of the five. Like, I understand that, but it, like if that is the case. But it just looks crap. The ball's flying everywhere. On top of that, how many sets after that did they not choose to do a repeat set because they're like, oh, these short dropouts are getting really risky? Put it this way. How many times did you watch on the weekend in other games where they just got tackled on the fifth play because they were like, no point bloody risking a kick yeah. into the in, in And goal. you look back six, seven years ago, whenever the hell the rule came in about the seven tackle set, teams would go, all right, we're not going to kick into the in goals. We'll just Ugh. get tackled. Now I'm going, fuck, even if I get the kick right, I probably don't get rewarded. Yeah. What's the point? I'll turn the ball over a metre out. Yep. Just umbrella our defence and we'll go from there. That's boring footy. That's, That's boring. not what they're trying to achieve. Yeah. You just know there's going to be so many occasions this season where you know, a gun kick gets three repeat sets in a row and they win it back off the opposite, uh, off the dropout three out of three and you just sit there going, what are we doing here, boys? Yeah. Like, yeah. We've got, something's got to change. It's, uh, yeah, uh, I don't get it. But anyway... Um, like and that's we're not having a dig at the Sharkies here. I thought they did would you know giving them a compliment. Their defence was absolutely outstanding, especially for a side that last year there was periods of like sitting there basically going, this left side for the Sharkies is just almost need to be completely scrapped and rebuilt mm. again. For them to come out and do what they did, absolutely outstanding at Warriors against that crazy. Um, like the crowd, the atmosphere was all pro warriors, obviously, but it felt like a different beast over there. Well, I arguably can be the best attacking side in edge in the competition last year was the Warriors' right edge going out as exactly what you said. The, the Sharks' left edge, which defensively last season was one of the worst statistically, um, and they just repelled them, repelled them, repelled them. Yeah, which is really good sh signs for the Sharkies because at the very least, because it's not like the Warriors – Tack was like super clunky. It mm. looked pretty good. Like obviously not at the top tier. It will be towards the end of the year. Uh, but the fact that they defended so well together is like they've clearly worked on in the off season. And 
at the very least, you've got a, a game evidence of this can work. If we're all on board, we all do the right thing, we can defend well on the, the, the edge there. Can't get your thoughts, but I, th- there are so many parallels in the Raiders-Knights game to this Warriors-Sharks game mm. with these two attacking juggernauts at the back end of last season, the Warriors and Knights, who were just a bit clunky early on, couldn't quite put it together, their attack, and then you had the Raiders and the Sharks, who were these gritty, forward-heavy teams that just... Defend, 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 and grind out around my win. So many parallels. Yeah, yeah, it was a really good win for the Sharkies, and geez, that's going to be um, just a confidence builder for them. Like they managed to beat the Warriors, and their attack was super average, like yeah. super average, and they still managed to get the job done. Um, some standouts for me: Talakai thought he was outstanding, and I think, look, obviously it's a long season. Get that out of the way, but it's a really good example of guys. It takes a few years for these guys to learn their position. We are so quick to see a guy in a position in his first year and go, ah, oh, no, nah, he's, he's not a center or he's not a back rower, he's not a front rower or a halfback or whatever it is. It takes a few years to get your timing right, to get used to the guys next to you, especially on the edge. Like if you've just moved out into the centers, it's going to take a couple of years to know when does your halfback jam in or when does it stay out. And obviously Trindle is relatively new to that spot as well. Um, unless, he was on that side, was he? Hines didn't change sides. Or did Hines? Trindle was inside. Talakai, yeah, yeah, Tala. yeah, yeah. And so, like, that's going to take time to build up. And and I thought Talakai, I thought it was one of his better games. And honestly, they probably don't win the game without Talakai out there. He was absolutely outstanding for him. Yeah, I, I thought he was great, Talakai. Uh, and you mentioned, mate, it's going to take time to learn positions and whatnot. Just keep in mind, it wasn't that long ago. Talakai wasn't in rugby league. <laughs> I think he was working for the local council over here. Like he's the how far he's come in a short amount of time is unbelievable, and uh, I, I think he's in for a big, big season there. Mm. Him and Mulatalo, fuck, it's a good edge, great edge. I, I truly believe the worry, uh, sorry, the Sharkies outside back is the most underrated back line in the comp. Um, so well balanced, so well balanced, so cons- like Ramian's job on RTS, like what a battle there, like. Basically, RTS carves up most centres in that position. And Ramian, if you, if you said the top five centres in the game, Jesse wouldn't be there. But very rarely does he have a bad game, in my opinion. I'm sure there are people that disagree. But, mate, I thought that he did a fantastic job on RTS. Yeah. Shout out to Jackie Williams. Played his 100th game in the NRL. Good Kirby impact. Cold, Kirby Good Cold. Imp- and always a bit of an unsung hero for that club, but he, he has a, a ton of family over in New Zealand as well. So to have the game over in New Zealand, you go, oh, big milestone game. It actually worked out phenomenally well for him <laughs> with all the family over there. But yeah, it goes about his business, never causes a stir, but a good football. And I thought he was also terrific on the weekend off the bench. Uh, another shout out, Nico Hines' defence. Oh, yeah. Holy. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that last tackle on, towards the end there, that one-on-one tackle with, oh, I can't remember who he tackled. Anyway, it was an absolute pearler of a tackle. Through the midsection, completely chopped him down. Uh, I thought his defence, that's probably the best defence I've seen Nico display. By far and away. And we're talking about a guy, another example, what is it, his third or fourth year of half in the NRL? Going to take, third year of half in the NRL, going to take time. I thought he looked outstanding. Yeah, oh, I thought defensively it was very good. It was one of my worries coming into this season with the Sharkies. Uh, and you could tell the worries very early. They tried to get Jackson Ford on him constantly. Or just um, dropped the ball a few times trying to go at him. But, yeah, I thought Nico was very good in defence. I was impressed. Uh, Britt Nicola, again, is Blake ever going to play a bad game or what? Seriously. He has just taken his game to a whole new level where every single week he's in the top tier back rowers. He's the most consistent back rower in rugby league. I genuinely believe it. Honestly, it's not a bad shout. Not a bad shout at all. And also just he's he just does so many little things right that they're not going to be on the highlight reel. You may not – you know, notice them. But if you're watching him specifically, like these are just these little moments that he wins every single time. He just seems to hurt in defence <laughs> yeah. as well. He's, he's Bro, I had him on the potty. At the end of it, I was like, mate, I'm a huge fan of your defence. Like your technique's hectic. You're a hitter. He goes, oh, really? You think I'm a big hitter in defence? I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Then I was like, that's coming from a winger though. So it doesn't really hold <laughs> much weight. Um, that's how humble he is. That's how humble he is. Like he doesn't know. I would, I'd put him up there as one of the better back row hitters in the game. Like, you'd be in my top five for sure. Did you ever yeah. put a shot on in your career, mate? Are you serious? <laughs> Are you honestly serious? There is, like, I I don't even think I've got a dominant tackle. <laughs> 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 Great Justin Hodges said to me, Kempi, you score more tries than you let in, you win the game. 
<laughs> easy job. Easy job. Easy focus. No, I, I was I was I was actually pretty good at reads, but I was just never dominant because my technique wasn't there, bro. I was playing in a real nervous about passing every time I got in dummy half because I had fucking I'd never done it. <laughs> so like <laughs> tackling for me, I didn't like put it this way the. The week before I rocked up to Clydesdales, which is Broncos reserve grade um, preseason, I was down at my old athletics club with my old running coach, tackling my brother, being taught by my running coach how to tackle, where to put my head in that. <laughs> on a running coach on was a, teaching to yeah. tackle in rugby league. And he gave me this book about like the history of rugby league and that, because I didn't know anything about it. Um, and yeah, so my brother was like on the grass running track, not on, even on a footy field. And he was like telling me like, you put your head here, you do that. And I'm like, what the hell? So anyway. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Any other standouts for you guys? No, no it's hey, all me mate, for the Sharkies. Just, just Nico. Um, best tackle efficiency out of any of the any of the Sharkies. So twenty one tackles, ninety five percent efficiency. Um, he did say in the press conference after the game that was the key thing he was going to improve this year was his defence. Love that. Nailed That's it. Awesome. Brought it to the game. Was do you reckon it was worth six uh, Dally M votes? That's what we're about to get into. Yeah. Uh, with all that being said, yeah. Okay, we got to talk about this Dalian Boat yeah. situation. Great defence, don't get me wrong. Great defence. Yeah. We love Nico. We love hot boy Nico. So for the first round, Joey Manu got no points. Adam Reynolds got one point. Hines got six points. Hamiso got a point. My God. we got to sort this Dalian voting out. Like, you know, we are super positive on the show. We're not having a crack at the people that got points at all, guys. But this Dalian voting... This changes people's lives. This is something that they remember forever. We got to get serious about giving the votes to, and people will sit there and go, oh, it's all subjective. Mate, who watched Roosters versus Broncos and didn't think Joey Manu deserved points? Bro, Madness. if he did nothing the whole game and did that flick, he should get at least one point. I just, we got to sort this out um, because again, it changes lives. If we want to take it seriously, if we want it to continue to grow and be an important part of our game, we got to sort the point, uh, the point system out. Um, you know, for for example, Hamiso, like huge fan of him, but there is no way that he should have gotten a point the other day. He has multiple key areas that he, sorry, key errors that happened in the game that cost him twelve points. His team got beat by thirty odd at home, and by Hamiso's standards, I thought he had a shocker. He had one good play about seventy minutes into the game when it was dead and buried. I, it's just so we got to hopefully uh, there is a bit of. Um, people vocal to the NRL to like make sure we get this right because you, how many points did SJ lose by on the last year? One? Well, that's the thing. Yeah. You get to the end of last year and you've got SJ losing. Everyone's coming after KP. KP's not the problem. It's no. the Dally M system. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's, that's craziness. So, yeah, we don't talk about it each week or whatever, but we thought we'd speak about it early in the year yeah. because when I saw that, when Matty told me some of these points and that, I'm just going, mate, that's so unfair to blokes going out there that this changes their lives. You go and speak to any former player, if they've won a Dally M, it means a lot to them, a lot to them. Who, uh, who got the points from the Roosters game then? Okay, so Was it Radley or what? Nah, so Teddy got five, Collins got four, Radley got two, Reynolds got one. Manu didn't get a thing. Manu, Manu and May got nothing. So it's just yeah. like, come on. And then you look at Nico getting six points in that game. So Adam Fnuller Blake was unbelievable. Yeah, but like Nico, I don't remember the last time, and I can go through the, the numbers and there'd be something somewhere, but Nico did not have a try. He didn't have a try assist. He kicked a goal. He didn't have a line break, a line break assist. A tackle, he didn't have a tackle break. He kicked a I don't, goal. I don't remember the last time that Nico <laughs> Hines didn't have something a tackle related in his stat. And this and is why six points. This is why Talakai and Mulatalo were unbelievable. And this is what Adam Fenor Blake had in 56 minutes a try, 22 hit ups, 220 meters, 61 post contact, six tackle breaks, God. two line breaks, two offloads, 23 tackles, zero misses. Nico Hines wasn't the best halfback on the field the other day. So, and again, this is we, you know, we're this is not a knock on Nico at all. I thought he was incredibly defensively, and it was an incredible win by Sharkies. But we got to sort this Dally M system out because holy, the judges did get it right for one category: Dally M Goatee of the Year. Guth, Gutho got six votes, and Todd <laughs> Payton, the big slide, got zero this week. So <laughs> they were pretty dialed in for that particular award. But and that's across, what matters across the board. We got to sort it out. Though. We got to sort it out. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Anyway, let's get back to the game. Anything else on the Sharkies, boys? 
All good, mate. All oh, good. Some negatives. Royce Hunt. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Tough gig. Tough gig. My brother. Just put it tuck under. Tuck it. Just tuck, tuck it. The, uh, You're so big, so explosive. You can <clears throat> literally steamroll anyone. And I'm sure, look, I'm sure he's his biggest critic. But, um, you know, if they're going to go deep in the finals, they need him at, at his absolute best. Round one jitters, all that stuff. But, yeah, I thought he, that was – you just got to sort that out. So, what, if you are the Sharkies winning, walking away from that game with a win and also – Taking on Adam Fanua Blake when he's in that sort of, sort of form, knowing he's coming next year. Yeah. Wow. If there's oh. like, I feel like with offloading as a forward, you shouldn't go into any play thinking I'm going to offload. Barring like an attacking yeah. setup where maybe you're an edge back rower and you've got a fullback or someone following you through the line, go in. If you win the contact enough and you've got the arm free, pop it. It just looked like Royce Hunt's going in there going, I need to pop this ball no matter what the situation is. Like, mate, time and place, it'll come. It'll come. And uh, similar to what we're saying earlier. If, I, if you're Royce Hunt, mate, if he runs hard and fast, first five carries, I guarantee that offload's coming. He'll skittle blokes. He'll have both arms free. Just focus on that. Yep. It'll come. And, and he's so important because he, he has so much potential, Royce Hunt. Like, so much potential. And um, round one, you know. So, like, not a huge deal, but just one thing that I did notice that stood out to me. Uh, I thought Toby Rudolph came off the bench. I thought he had a lot of impact. Jack Williams as well. I think he plays. He played his role perfectly. They needed speed through the middle, mm. bit of leg drive, bit of uh, mobility, uh, and he brought that in the forward pack when he did come on. Um, but outside of that, every single one of them, including including Hunt, like I'm not saying that he was the only one that was poor in attack. There were quite a few boys that struggled in attack. Um, but in defence, one to seventeen, amazing effort, amazing effort to go down in New Zealand and get the job done. Sharky's fans should be super excited and happy with that performance because that's just look. Obviously, it would be good to go and win a game in round one with incredible attack. But as we just discussed, if you can get your defence sorted early, the attack will come. Whereas defence is the one that struggles to come. Good teams play poorly and find a way to win. Yep, Sharky's on the weekend tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh, now onto the Warriors. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. I think that they just fell into the trap of score those first two tries and then thought it's going to happen every time. I think that's exactly what happened. I reckon their first fifteen minutes was so good it hurt them. Yeah, because they looked. They come out as I said, and they just looked unbelievably red hot. And that's just that's just a lesson to learn. I th I think it's look. When you look at the Knights and you look at the Warriors, it's understandable why they would feel that way. Like, they finished the season on such a high. You'd understand why they're heading into round one going, boys, we are fucking on here. Like, we're just going to spin it, score all these tries like we did towards the end of the year. Um, and it's just a bit of a, a good lesson for a relatively inexperienced team playing together to go, oh, you've got to build into seasons. This does, it's not just yeah. going to come straight away. They, there are plenty of good signs there from the Warriors that, again, if you're a supporter, you wouldn't be concerned one bit. They had... <clears throat> They had a bit of a double whammy in that round one, as we keep saying, we saw it so many times on the weekend, it takes, it takes time for mm. them to get into sync and missing Charles and Klukstad. Charles to that sweeping play, particularly yeah. on the right last year, was just everything. And they kept going down the right. Uh, and Torpiki, I thought, had a great game, but is very much at this early stage of his career a ball running fullback. Like for his size, he was busting tackles, looked electric. Mm. The ball playing isn't there compared to Chance. Um, and he doesn't have to be, you know, mm. like Chance is far more developed <coughs> in his career. But Chance outside SJ last season, particularly in the back end, was sensational. I think if Chance plays that, I think they win the game 24 mm. 16. Um, but the, the attack was just a little bit clunky as a result of that. Doesn't it show you the value of like, it's hard to put into. You know, it's hard to measure how important that out the back play is. Like, what do you trade off for that? You know, you do you go, all right, we've got this fullback. He can run 250 metres every game, have 10 tackle breaks. We've got this other fullback. He runs for 120 metres, has 10 runs, but he's out the plat. It's so, super hard to find that balance. His timing's never off. Yeah. You go, oh, it's, it's, I don't know. And so, like, you look at stats sometimes for certain players and you go, okay, 200 metres, you know, six break, tackle breaks. And that is really, really good. But would you go, okay, I'll, I'll give away 50 metres to have an extra yeah. try assist? It's a really hard balance to I find. I think a good example of that is Will Kennedy, who mm. he's not the biggest metre-eating fullback in the game. Statistically, he doesn't rack up enormous numbers like the best fullbacks, but 
His ball playing, particularly that three on two situation, he gets right so often. Mm. Um, he was a, really brave on the. I thought he yeah. was outstanding. I, Will I Kennedy. love Will Kennedy. Yeah, like his ball playing is just really high quality. And so what he gives up in maybe a few meters compared to some of the best fullbacks in the game, silkiness on the end of the back line goes a long way. I thought his defense, 11 tackles as a fullback, mm. more than I made in my bloody career. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but back to the Warriors. Uh, Tohu Harris, I mean. I know people get sick of us saying this, but Jesus Christ, that guy just fucking, he does not salt. There's a reason why they call him a zombie. Um, Jackson Ford, a couple of errors, needs to clean up in his game, especially with such uh, pressure on that spot. Yeah, errors in collisions always been a problem for Jackson because, um, mate, God, he runs a good line. It's, but it is just, it's, it's a shot in the dark whether he holds it each time, though. It's just like, and obviously not being a forward, like, please, like, what do I know? But I think sometimes with forwards like that, they're thinking about too many things at once. Like, where's the like? As in, I need to break the line. If I break the line, what I'm going to do? And instead of just going, all my focus is on catching this ball, yeah. um, which is it's easy, easy for me to say that. But when you've got a guy jamming, screaming in at you, it's almost like you know how you where people have a crack at fullbacks when they drop a ball, and they you know they should catch most balls. But it's it's much it's easy to look and say, bro, just catch the ball. But you don't have you know, a hundred kilo guy screaming yeah. down at you, ready to jam at yeah. you. And that's like Jackson Ford situation. I reckon like if he can just somehow almost just take away self-preservation, he already does to a degree and just go, I am only thinking about catching that ball. Then once I definitely have it in my hands, then I'll have my next thought. And he's running at the edge of uh, Britain Nicaragua there. Oof. So yeah, the well, understandable. The Boys, yeah. this weekend, so we've got Kurt Capel in doubt, rib cartilage. We've got Mirada Neokora who's dealing with a foot injury. We might see Laban. Laban. Oh, yeah. How exciting is that? That's, uh, look, and I tell you what, if he kills it, that's exactly what you want because there'll be like a lot of pressure mm. on those positions. Um, thoughts about Lusick at 14. Um, I actually thought, well, I, it's not a surprise to say this, but... As soon as Egan went off, geez, their attack was nowhere near as smooth as it was. Yeah, but you know what, mate? I, if I'm coaching the Warriors, I have to carry a four yeah. day. Egan gets a bumper and injury every week at the oh, moment. Oh, yeah, for sure. But would you go Tavanga over him? No. No, I don't like Tavanga as a dummy half. Okay. okay. I'm not a huge Freddie Lussick fan, but I, I, I think Jazz has had. I, I'd play Dylan Walker at nine over Freddie Lussick, to be and honest. And so we'll come in the middle. I. I Jazz is too slow around the rock. I, I would. Be, I agree with you, mate. I actually probably would put Dylan Walker to fourteen, and then bring another big forward onto the bench, or a back rower. Just trying to think, Bunty Afoa, Arle, probably a back rower actually. Yeah. So I'd probably move Dylan Walker to fourteen. I mean, Freddie Lussick. Freddie Lussick is good because he comes on. Jazz started at prop in New South Wales Cup. <laughs> Played sixty-eight minutes, twenty-five runs, two hundred twenty-eight meters. Oh. He made forty tackles. Oh fuck. I think we need to stop looking at Jazz as a hooker option. He's yeah. Ju he's just not. Yeah, okay. Uh, the good thing about Freddie, though, is that he would defend his absolute ass off. It yep. was just – is a little bit – just the timing wasn't there because he hasn't played that much footy probably with Sean Johnson. Um, it is getting concerning around Egan. Like, funny thing is, is oh. when you look at the na amount of games he plays, you go, oh, well, he's played 23 games or 22 games, but he had seven HIAs last year. Yeah. And then I know, like – the thing is, is he can't help the fact that his arm got hyperextended. Yeah. But it's just like nearly every game, something is going wrong. Yeah. And it's not his fault at all, but it's just unfortunate. Yeah, when, when you have a look at the stats of how many games he plays, it makes no sense. What you have mm. to do is look at the minutes he plays mm. in those games. And he's, he he, miss, he falls out. He has HIAs. He has a lot of things go wrong in games. Vast majority of the time, because Wade is just too fucking tough for his own good. Mm. Um, but very similar to what you said about Charles, mate. Just the timing of Wade Egan. Oh. That try to Barnett. Can't measure it. Yeah. Like. It, it, it's frustrating, isn't it? Because he plays around that 20-odd games every season, but goes off injured in so many of them. He must be a tough prick. Well, I mean, at least seven HIAs last year, yeah, which it, is fucking crazy. But, and that's it. Like, ideally, you wouldn't, with no knock on Lussie, just the structure of the team, ideally, you wouldn't carry Lussie on the bench, but with how often he goes off injured, you have to carry a nine, don't you? Yeah, like, like an out-and-out nine. Out nine. Yeah, pretty yeah. Much. The other option is, which I'd love to see them do, even like a um, Chanel harris Tavita. I reckon he could jump in there at a high clip. Ooh, don't mind that. Well, then you have well your Harris Tavita and Tamari Martin both shredded New Wales Cup, just looking at the stats and that, but knocked off the Jets. And they had Harris Tavita scored a try and two try assists. Ooh, Tamari right. Martin had three line assists and two try assists. He's a good defender too, CH2. I, I really like him. He I don't mind that shout. He'd be a great yeah. 14. 
You could put a six, seven, even fullback if you needed it. And then you can still use Dylan Walker, who I thought was tremendous on the weekend. Awesome through the Dilly. middle. Yeah. Is, is he been the best bench player over the last three, two years, three years? <laughs> Who's been better? He's been up there. Top five, easily uh, bench players. Well and truly, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Warriors fans, the good thing is, it's like, okay, yes, they lost at home. Like, understandable. But they still looked good. The Warriors, you know, like they didn't come out and look like a rabble, you know, where you're sitting there going, oh my God, like what's going on here? They looked pretty bloody good. Adam Fennell Blake, unbelievable again. They're, uh, they take on the Melbourne Storm this week. The Melbourne Storm coming off that tough game against the Panthers. Warriors are at $3. I love that. Bit of value there. And Warriors Storm, usually a big, big clash. What do you reckon? Yeah, well, you, you've just about covered it all off. I think uh, the, the one little, they, they started so well, Fennell Blake. First try score, 20 bucks. Ooh, Thanks for coming. Juicy. $8, sorry, $5.80 any time. Ooh. I think he punches above his weight in that department for Noah Blake. Um, yeah. For, for tries. Uh, maybe let him through to the keeper this week against the Storm, who obviously kept Penrith scoreless, so that their defence a little bit tighter. But, um, you, I mean, you covered off on all his numbers. So impressive. 220 metres, uh, stack of offloads. Sharkies be licking their lips saying best bloke on the field for them is coming over to our team next year. So that uh, pack, that shark side yeah. with Adam Noel Blake is getting more and more exciting. Yeah. Whew. The other thing about it when it does eventuate, because he's a big minute prop forward and he, you know, he plays 60 minutes quite easily for Noel Blake. Mm. Like, it does annoy me a bit, but they always carry this four middle forward bench. Fitzy mm. loves it. I'm like, really? Like, get some X factor in there somewhere, something to change it up. Yeah. But maybe they don't see themselves, you know, with Finucane and a few others there having big minute forwards, so they have to for whatever reason. AFB coming in, I reckon they can drop one of those middles and, and put some with a bit more X factor in the back. Yeah. Um, so great win from the Sharkies. Not much to worry about the Warriors. If anything, I thought it was actually a, a pretty good game from the Warriors that just... If you needed it, if you wanted to look at a side that it truly was just clunkiness that probably stopped them from winning, probably the Warriors. Um, and also, obviously, an incredible defence. Not to take nothing away from the Sharkies. Um, so, really, really great signs for the Sharkies. I'll take a lot of confidence out of that. All righty, Storm defeat the Panthers eight to zero, and that is why Storm are the early season edge thanks to Musashi. Use code BLOKE35, that's BLOKE35, to get 35% off Musashi, uh, Musashi products, not including bundles. Uh, Musashi are the number one trusted sports nutrition brand and are ex experts in sports nutrition. Join Musashi United to gain access to Musashi Performance Lab, access free nutrition and training plans for your sport, exclusive contact and a lifetime discount on products. The link to this will be in the show notes. As I said, BLOKE35, 35% 35 off products. We've got some pre-workout here. We've got some energy drinks. It's all there. Thanks to Masashi for partnering with the show. And they are Storm, our early, edge, early season edge Musashi side. Musashi side. I mean, if this wasn't a Storm performance, I'm not here. Like, if you needed a performance to typify what the Melbourne Storm are all about, this was it. Really gutsy performance in defence. Yes, clunky in attack, all of that. Quite a lot of errors. So we know they can do this, the Storm, the Melbourne Storm. What impressed me the most is I thought their forward pack looked the most dynamic it's looked in a couple of years now, uh, a really, really important win for the Storm heading into the year. Can you believe that after the last two years, we're talking about the Melbourne Storm and their forward pack looking the best and Nass wasn't there? Mm. Yeah, so he's true. He's been the key headpiece for the last two years. He's the one we need to stand up. Mm. He's not there and they stand up against the Penrith Panthers. Yep. Incredible. Yeah, great performance. Saw this, obviously you've got this famous round one record, which is now 23 years or something. Dates back to about 2002, the Melbourne Storm haven't lost in round one and you just go... It's phenomenal, but you know, they're now coming up against three-time defending premiers Penrith, who have got most of their squad on deck. You add into that that they lose their most important forward outside of Harry Grant in Nelson Soft Solomona. Then Cameron Munster, the most important halves player, is taken out of the side. Ryan Pavnell is coming back from lengthy injury layoffs, and you're going, they can't, can they? They can't. Not only do they do it, they keep them to zero points. Craig Bellamy, what the hell? It's incredible. And you would assume without any context, oh, Sean Bloor must have jumped out of the ground. Nope, didn't play. Nope, Jack Howarth must have jumped out of the ground. No, nope, didn't play. Chan, on the edge, killed it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My man Chan. You just mentioned uh, the Panthers didn't score a point. What, what do you reckon the storm to win to, to zip would have been paying Ooh, oh, heading into deep. that game? What, 150 to one? 67 bucks. Oh, unders. <laughs> <laughs> but still unbelievable yeah. and you're spot on to keep that there's a lot of talking on on some of the shows late in the week last week uh about the surely the street can't keep going some of those players missing for them to keep it going there's got to be some 
Bellamy voodoo shit going on be. down there. There's got to be. Unbelievable. T- 22, 23 years. You're kidding. Yeah. And like, it's, it's almost like the NRL said, all right, we've had enough of this. We're going to send <laughs> yeah. the three-time premiership yeah. team down to Melbourne. Uh, and also, you're not going to be at full strength. And I understand Mitch Kenny wasn't playing for the Panthers, but they got the job done. And look, aside for that last 20 minutes, and obviously that's still a big chunk of the game, it, I, they had control of the game for large stretches. It wasn't one of those kind of games where they were just hanging in there the 80 minutes and somehow got it done. For periods, there, the Storm were in control. Um, you know, so really, really good performance from the Melbourne Storm. Some standouts for me. Uh, it was more of a team effort, but some standouts for me where I'm like, oh, he's in for a big year. Xavier Coates looks mm. very, very good. He looks fit. He looks fast. He looks super strong in contact. It's, it almost looked like to me he's, he's coming to his man strength. Just some of his runs where he was, you know, just bending the line. Um, he was super active. He had 18 runs. You know, yes, he was doing that kind of towards the end of last year, but there were a, a, a couple of years where he was notorious for a guy where we were like, we need some more runs from we're, the We were quite, quite critical from memory pre-season last year, weren't we, of Coach saying he needs to swap his output in attack. Yep, yep. Yeah. And 81 post-contact <laughs> against the Penrith Panthers. When you only run for 100, not only, but when you run for 158 and 81 is post-contact, <laughs> wild. And, like, there wasn't a line break in there either. It's just... No. Tough carries. And only three tackle breaks. So it's not like he was yeah. bouncing around between people. They were just tough, tough carries. Mate, my guy that stood out that I think is in for a massive season is uh, Eli Katoa. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was unreal. How yep. good does he look? Yeah. It, it, it looks like almost it, – it's not like – it's not plays where he's just using purely natural talent for it to come off. And sometimes you can go on these purple patches where – no pun intended – where those, <laughs> like, things – they. Uh, pay off for you like big offloads or big plays and then you go through a bad patch and you start knocking it on or whatever he's doing things like one percenters yeah. that the tough stuff that's making him a better player that imagine him still in, if he was doing this in that warrior system they have another gun edge back oh my god but I, i'm just so excited for that hughes ellie katoa combination this year it, it has so much potential just to be to to evolve in something so special Gavin Cooper, Jonathan Thurston territory, edge back rower, half bat. Oh my goodness! It's just going to get better it's and be, better. It's beautiful. Because I, I don't Guru even. Guru and th- Williams. Oh, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> One game at a time. Hyperbolic. Far yeah. out, Gary. Yeah. Oh. Jeez, <laughs> Louise. Um, and as I said, like I still feel like we haven't even seen the top end of what he can do. He's just doing all the foundational things really well, and then every now and then a big play will come in. And isn't this the exact sort of game that two years ago you would have said Eli Katoa would want nothing to do with this? Yeah, yeah. You know, against the lower tier teams, he'd have these big moments. Yep. And then against the top tier sides, he would struggle. Mm. He was arguably the best back row on the field. Yep. Best, toughest. He was, he was great, Eli Katoa. Um, another guy who I thought, although um, I'm pretty sure he was marked up against Taylor May, Nick Meany. He was on May's side. Yes. Yeah. For, for how explosive May was, I thought Nick Meany was bloody outstanding. Um, and again, I know May had a really, really good game. So you'd say, well, how could May have a good game if Meany did? But again, like May is one of the best young rookies in the competition. And for Nick Meany to get through the amount of work he did, so he had 16 runs, 166 metres, 67 post contact. Mm. He's not a big body. 20 tackles. So they, they had a, a plan to attack Meany's edge and only two misses. I think, I think he's in for a big year, man. Mate, Taylor May was an absolute handful, looked terrific. There was no points down the edge at the end yep. of the day. Kept him to zero. I know they had that one try pulled back that was a bit controversial, but, yeah. Mean, and keep in mind, it's Meany's third position. Yeah. You know, yeah. he spent time, most of the time either a wing or fullback. He's an out centre. He's also spent a bit of time at 5'8". Tough position to get slotted into defensively on someone like Taylor May. And like, Sutra stuff there from uh, <laughs> he. Um, I don't know Bellamy spoke about him in the press conference. He just was so uh, hot on his ticker, just going. You know, he's, he keeps changing positions, just keeps keeps nailing it. Um, yeah, he was great. Um, Nick Meany had a, had a whale game. Sixteen runs, one hundred and sixty-six meters. So a guy that's not a big frame, and he's averaging more than ten meters a run, and he had sixty-seven post contact. That's a great knock. That's what you see from the big, big centres, not from a guy that, you know, maybe a fullback, maybe a six, maybe a winger. Uh, and what I, and I love what I love about Nick Meany's story is it's so storm-like where they take a guy down who was struggling to make, I think, the Knights, then the Bulldogs. Yeah. Yep. And now he's a lock-in for the 17 no matter what. 
and gets rewarded for, although he didn't set the world alight in the positions he was playing at the Storm, he did all the little things Storm love right every week. Also with Nick Mania, like coming out of, you know, junior grades, he was a couldn't miss talent. Mm. Really struggled in first grade and Melbourne just take him in. I'll be honest, I, I said it when they signed him, I, I didn't think they'd get that much out of him. Yep. He's been, you know, he's arguably their, their best in multiple positions. Yeah, their best, um, like, can play multiple, you know, outside what back Mr. positions. What a is. Oh, yeah. 100%. Basically, anywhere in the back line, including six, you can play him. And, he can, yeah, and he'll do a... One to six. He'll do a decent job yeah, at yeah. minimum, uh, which is so important to have in today's game with so much HIAs. So, yeah, I thought he was outstanding. Um, like, Pappy, did he set the world alight? No, he didn't set the world alight, but, geez, doesn't his just presence add a different dimension to their forward pack? Just him being around the ruck, it just gives that... That extra thing defences have to worry about. It puts them on edge. 100%. The whole time. And just makes gaps a little bit bigger for his men, front rowers and that, to get through and get quick play You're the balls. You're defending that and you know one of these storm forwards gets the arm free, Pappy sniffing around, in the blink of an eye, he's way and gone. Yep. Was, we didn't see it first game back of the season, but this was also a classic round one gritty affair. Again, uh, some pretty clunky attacks and two terrific defensive teams. It was always going to be a low scorer. Um, another guy who nearly made our team of the week but just missed out, Christian Welsh was unbelievably good. Uh, mate, when you, when you look at Christian Welsh and, you know, the thing that I always look for to see if he's had a good game or not, go to the stat sheet, offloads yeah. four in this game. When he's offloading Christian Welsh, he's at his absolute best and he didn't do it last year. He was very quiet coming off that injury. Hopefully we can start to see him get back to his best because mm. Christ, Melbourne are going to need When he's offloading, he's bending the line and, and yeah. sort of busting, and not necessarily busting and tackle, but getting the arm free. It's a great call. Always a good sign for Welch, isn't And it? also, for Storm, they're such a, you know, toilet team. You need a guy to upset rhythm sometimes. Otherwise, you get into these patterns. And we saw last year where teams would just read the pattern and it would just be really easy to defend. And I mean, like you spoke about uh, Royce the Choice Hunt before, obviously, going into contact, looking to offload. There's offloads and then there's good selective offloads and mm. Welsh always nails them. He offloads yeah. at the right time mm. and the right moment, which is just so important. Well, because the Storm would be, and I'm sure Fitzgibbon says it as well, but it is, you know, 101 forward coaches say to their forwards, never, what you just said to me, don't go into a hit up thinking about the offload. Think about contact first, run first. Then if the offload presents itself, it'll, it'll come. Um, so yeah, I thought Christian Welsh was outstanding and, uh, it's just that's what they need in their forward pack. They need pressure on these front row positions so that, you know, now they've got a Josh King who's a butler. He's just going to work his ass off. He was also great. Um, another guy I want to talk about, Jonah Pezzett. There was a period there where I was a bit like, oh, I don't know if he's going to take yeah. this next step. But, and look, it's a small sample size. I thought he was really good. He was also great in the trials. I think he's just doing what the Storm do best is is like, Year on year, getting a little bit better, rounding out your game a little bit more. Is he going to be the New South Wales of like under 19s, New South Wales four tries, this guy? Maybe, maybe not. But at the moment, he's looking like a good, solid half in the NRL. Yeah, I had a lot of question marks going to last year. I think, as you said, can be off the back of that um, that New South Wales game a couple of years ago. He had a lot of hype around him. I, I thought he was a little bit overhyped coming out of that. But you're right, mate. He's just, he just improves each week. Yeah, and it just, you just watch him each week and it's just, his game's a little bit more well-rounded. Yeah. He makes a decision that's just a little bit smarter than the week before and that's what the Storm do best. Digs into the line, he looks tough. Yep. There's obvious class about him. Like Absolutely. Some of the moments he has ball playing, kicking, whatever, you go, oh, it's like he's got a bit to offer this kid. I'll tell you what, on him, he obviously got his opportunity with Cam Munster being out. That does not sound good to me. It Very messy, strange. Wasn't it? Yeah. That's him them not I've knowing what it is. Talk like that before. That was And even Belly Axe like we don't know what it is and we don't know how to fix it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, they think so. That like very like it sounds like something that might need look guys, <laughs> go to NRL Physio, he'll know fucking more. But as a pure dribbler, <laughs> uh, usually if you've got like even a tear, it's very relatively easy to go okay that's a tear that's going to be a four to six week injury to be like we don't even know what it is that's like sounds like surgery and just Munster and Bellamy and just their body language and their tone mm. I wouldn't be surprised if he's out for a lot longer than what we think that's what I mean like I wouldn't be surprised if they're like oh we found what it is and you need a, a surgery for it yeah again pure dribblers guys like this is Pure around the pub, drinking beers, no idea what yeah, we're talking nothing about. Nothing to back this up yeah. in any way, shape, well, getting or form. Getting away from the dribble and getting a little bit serious here, boys. Could be uh, osteopubis. Maybe. Don't Maybe. know what it is. Don't know what, what like, if young boys... Who does he play for? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if, if, don't know if 
Good oh. bearing. Austria, <laughs> is, is that a young Greek guy coming through? <laughs> 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 no, I don't even know what Austria Pumas is. <laughs> he's a bloody good player, though, I'll tell you yeah, that. Yeah, he's good. He's been good in the lower grades. <laughs> um, but, just, I mean, the, the emergence of um, Pezzet, all of a sudden, it's good God, obviously, you want Munster back there. But if he does happen to be out for a stretch of six to eight weeks, whatever it might be, if mm. it does stretch on, great opportunity for Pezzet to stand up early in the season. Do you reckon um, Jonah Pezzet... Parents, big super bad, super bad fans. <laughs> because of Jonah Hill. Yeah, M- maybe. It's a good. It's a pretty funny movie. All big Jonah Arc fans. Could be anything. Could be anything. CBA. Yeah. CBA. Yeah. Another one to the black book. Um, I just quickly on the Jonah Pezzet. Um, all jokes aside, you know, uh, Joey was talking about how there are real no, you know, how hard it is to find a young half coming through that is at NRL level, um, and so it's almost it almost kind of increases the impressive nature of Pezzet's uh, game in round one because you look at some of the other young halves at other clubs right now that are really struggling and he's out of sight, out of mind there, but it makes it even more impressive the fact that a guy so young in a game against the Penrith Panthers, round one, huge, huge pressure, comes on and plays like that. Yeah, get tougher than that. It, it really can't. It can't. It really can't. Outside of maybe Penrith at home, it, it does was it. at Penrith, yeah. maybe. But look, so really good um, game from Pezzet. Uh, Trent Leora at 13 I didn't mind it Yeah I, I thought he, I had I was very questionable On that decision To play him at 13 But I thought he looked alright What would you make of Joe Chan? I thought he was outstanding Yeah I think statistically You know you, He didn't blow the mm. You know Blow it out of the water But I thought Again It's just That explosive Threat I just feel like Even if They don't actually run the ball It's just more of a worry For defence mm. Rather than just having You know Toilers on the edge there Yep Um yeah, I thought he was really good. Uh, but Trent Leoro, what I liked about him is, okay, is, it's, is he Isaiah Yo or Tohu Harris with the ball play? Not really yet. But it's just that lateral defence that he can do through the middle that really helps him. Like Josh King, out and out front rower. And so laterally, he's probably not as quick. Well, he's definitely not as quick as Trent Leoro. Also, I think Trent Leoro actually did play a lot of 13 coming through the grades. The positive for Storm is if they can make this work, he's a relatively young forward at 13 that you can build a club around for the next you know five six years and those combinations with the the Munster the Hughes the Pappy or Falongo and Grant that's something that can be together for at least four or five years rather than you know an aging 13. Uh, yeah uh, Kamakamitha another great performance from him just all good all around really I mean again attack a bit clunky but really good performance. Uh, just for those playing at home too, so they are aware, the, um, I believe the Melbourne Storm this year, a lot of their juniors are going to play via the North Sydney Bears in the New South Wales Cup. Yep. So if you want to keep an eye on those guys, obviously, uh, Sua Falongo, he played fullback on the weekend for the Bears. Sean Bloor played in the second row there. Um, so yeah, if you want to keep an eye on those guys, they are playing for the How Bears. How many minutes did Bloor get season. out? 80 minutes. And Bloor was 18th man as well. So I guess that's a sign that he's pretty close, pretty close yeah. to getting yes. the start. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he wore jersey 21 in this game, so yeah. What was uh, Far Long or stats like? 180 metres. Uh, what do you have? Two, is that a line break? Two line break assists, two try assists. Pretty quiet by CBA standards. <laughs> <laughs> and will they win 28-4? Yes, yeah, over the Dragons, yeah. Uh, so great stuff from Storm, I mean... They keep proving the doubt is wrong. And just off that performance, the positive is, is seeing the, you know, their, their forward pack look more mobile, more explosive. You'd have to say they're a premiership contender this year. You know, I, I think we are all like probably premiership contender. I think after seeing that level is, I think they have the right ingredients everyone fit to push With for a premiership. And Munster to surely, come back in surely. As well. um, okay, now to the Panthers. Look, the Panthers, um, very, very clunky, a lot of errors. And also, to be honest, a lot of errors from players that are um, usually, you know, relatively error-free. Uh, even a guy like Taruva just dropping bombs, very uncharacteristic. Uh, are there concerns? Absolutely not. Will they probably be a slow starter for the next 10 rounds? I think so. They were four from eight to start last year. Yeah, it, it's just, I think that, that Ivan Cleary has found the right balance of, you know, um, you know, getting him peaking at the right time in the year. Uh, even Nathan Cleary, you know that once he gets into origin and then later on, that's when he really starts to hit his straps. 
so although disappointing and there's no, you know, you don't excuse it and go, oh, it means nothing. It does mean something. They, they made a lot of errors that they could have, they definitely had the opportunity to win the game, but 68% completion rate, obviously not good enough, but very fixable. Yeah, uh, they are the definition of a September football side. They'll be ready when the time comes. But, um, yeah, you can't just completely throw these games out. Uh, but, obviously, there was a lot of guys in there that, you know, Jerome Luai playing his first game of the season. I'll tell you who I'm starting to realise is incredibly important to this footy side. Scotty Sorensen. Yeah, they true. They so different Good without Scotty Sorensen, eh? I, You know, like, it wasn't that long ago that he was the interchange guy that we thought he'd never move off the bench. Mm. Like, he's one of the better second rowers in the competition. How much yeah. strike on the edge did they lose in the World Club Challenge and then again in round one without Scotty? Mm. 100%. Mm. It's, I, I can't believe how important he is to this it's side. It's a bit now. like keys to Storm. Like, just that quick yes. play of the ball yeah. that he, he gets through the middle that gives him, you know, that roll on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, without him, that, that edge is completely different. Uh, we spoke about Taylor May already. I, I'm so impressed. I, oh, <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, if any club is able to grab these two May boys... <laughs> Christ, you're going to set yourself up. So uh, on that, reports have come out that Tungo has been offered 750 grand a year. Again, just reports. Very bizarre that they are now offering reportedly Tungo 750 a year, but they just let Critty go when, you know, my understanding of the situation with Critter is he absolutely would have taken 750k a year. So that it just puts this whole situation even more strange and bizarre with allowing Critter to leave. Yeah, I think uh, from what I've gathered, the Panthers, they've got a couple of young guys coming through that they are very, very confident on. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them make a few rash decisions. But yeah, the Isaac Tungo at that sort of price, that has surprised me a little bit. Yeah, like I would have assumed they've gone, okay, we'll move Critter on because we'll we'll put May and Tungo both on 600k each. Mm -hmm. And that's why we can't get, you know, 750 to 800 to Critter. Because like it reports his contract with the Bulldogs was only around 700, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, back really? back into that shit fight. But that's it. I think so. Could you could you get it up? seven eight hundred? I'm pretty sure. I don't think it definitely wasn't a million. Definitely wasn't a million. I mean, they signed him pretty early a on, fair way out, didn't they? Like obviously prior to premiership, well and true, third but premiership. But even still, that's what's yeah. <laughs> even still, <laughs> he'd only won two in a row at the time. <laughs> yeah, even still, like for them to have that seven fifty k in the cap now for Tungle, mm. surely they would have been aware that's going to be there for Critter. Yeah, I don't know, mate. Very strange situation. It's a 3.3 over four years, so it's, it averages out to 8.25. So, yeah, 750 to Tungle. It's like, I'm caught. Yeah. You're not going to Bulldogs for an extra 75K a year. Yeah. Like, very weird one. Very strange. Anyway, positive is, is they must have money in the cap. Um, question will be, how do you keep Tungle end May? Because if May can keep his body right, holy moly, he looked good. They've got to sign him up ASAP. Yeah. Oh, I just mentioned there just a name to throw at you, which I think will become very relevant over the next few years. Um, J Jesse McLean, who made his debut last year for mm. Panthers. He's got a younger brother, Casey. Now, Casey got Howard Matt's player of the year last year in Howard Matt's, which means that, you know, until he's the proper age for SG Ball, he's got a year gap there. He's skipped SG Ball. He's playing Jersey Flag at the moment. He's gone from Harold Matz to Jersey Flag and did very well on the weekend. And just for the listeners' age. So Harold Matz um, under 17s, SG Ball 19s, Jersey Flag 21. So he is a year young for SG Ball right now, and he's completely skipped it, gone straight to Jersey Flag starting centre and is doing really well. Ooh. Insane. I mean, that production line out there is actually a joke. Like, Taylor May off that first performance is a smoky for Dallium centre of the year. It's just a matter of if he can keep his body right. And the only, being hyper nit nitpicky here, just the passing to your winger in space. Like, you know, yeah. sometimes you can be so explosive yeah. in contact, that's all you worry about. And, and that'll take time. Yeah. Because to my knowledge, I'm sure he's probably played a bit of centre or whatever, but to my knowledge, he was an out-and-out -out winger mm -hmm. up until this move to centre. He's probably never passed a ball in his life in a, in a game of football. He's never had to. So, uh, again, apologies if he did come through the grades. Of sense. You'd know, mate. Bloody hell. No, no, I, I've always seen him as a winger. Yeah. But, I mean... I felt the same about Stephen Crichton for three years. Yeah, not passing the football and yeah. still still worked. But yeah, the, uh, the, yeah, the the point is anyway, the like, passing will come at centre over yep. time. Um, so really, really exciting for Penrith fans that you can lose a guy like Critter, who although has proven himself in clutch mm. moments, and that's going to take time for Taylor May to do that. Uh, and also Critter's durability really underrated. Yeah. Um, it's a bloody good guy to have. Like to go out there round one, eighteen months off. You go down to Melbourne. And that's the way you play far. Imagine what he's going to be doing round 16. 
remember two years ago we were watching um, Isaac Tungo was playing left centre, Taylor May was playing left wing. And they were carving up some of the most experienced edges in rugby league. And, you know, I was saying there, I think this is the best left edge in rugby league. These two are just unbelievable. Now Taylor May's playing left centre and Tungo's playing right. Mm. And there's no concern whatsoever. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Um, yeah, like, wouldn't be one bit concerned being the Panther, being a Panthers fan, but, geez, they were ordinary. The, um... Just the errors Clear, in a few moments. Mate, the fifth tackle options were yeah. so poor from Cleary. Yeah. Like so uncharacteristic. And it's interesting because uh, off the back of the World Club Challenge, where they were also poor and they ran a lot on fifth, and we were sort of saying, you know, maybe small in goals, conditions, whatever. But really poor again in round one. Do you think the... The short dropouts? Sh- has, maybe, has rattled maybe, them a little bit? Maybe. Yeah. And maybe they've, maybe they've thought it to the perfect amount. Maybe they've overthought it and they've gone you know, a la Sean Johnson, the Warriors, that they're just repeat sets are less effective. So maybe running it does become more of the option and time will tell and see how that unfolds. Another, but it's just weird how quickly, two games in a row, really poor yeah. fit tackle options. Another option though could be, we all agree Penrith, the fittest team in the comp. Yep. Mm-hmm. Keep the ball in play. Don't give them any rest. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Just like get mm-hmm. tackled on the fifth. They have to play it immediately. We're so fit. We, yeah, that's maybe. what we want. And we just build pressure. That could be why they do that. Um, and some key stats... So Panthers fans, you know, can see what we're talking about in regards to nothing to worry about. They had uh, basically 300 more run meters than the Storm. Uh, they had three line breaks to Storms, line breaks to Storms one. They had 32 tackle breaks to Storms 29. Um, they had more of an average set distance than Storm. They had more kick return meters. Uh, their play the ball speed was a bit slower than Storm, so that's that's actually really interesting. Uh, they had 23 offloads compared to the Storms nine. Um, you know, so like these are key stats that if you're winning that and you sort out the other little things, you know, you're uh, you're on on the path to um, getting better. Uh, it's just the it's just the completion rate that killed them. 74 percent completion rate. What about the storm? Only sixty eight percent completion rate. So oh imagine gosh. what they're going to be bloody doing when they're completing at yeah. eighty. Look greasy out there, didn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. Going like seeing the if, if you said before the game and you saw the score line, you'd be going, all right, Melbourne have gone out and completed at ninety yeah. percent. They're like, no, they're sixty eight percent. I'll tell you what, having a look at next week, uh, Panthers, who looks pretty clunky, held to zero. Mate, they play Parramatta next week, their bogey side. <gasps> Parramatta's at $3. They look bloody good. They look sensational. Yeah, 60, 60 minutes week. at least. Tough start. They got, then they got the Broncos. Tough game. Roosters, Manly. And then uh, the old foe, the Tigers, out of Bathurst. And we know what happened <laughs> there last year as well. So not the easiest first six games <laughs> for, the, uh, for the Panthers. <laughs> um Anyway, great win from the Storm. Now, on to the next game. Uh, also, don't forget, uh, on Wednesday, I'll actually be heading down uh, to the fights. You right? fighting? Won't be fighting. <laughs> Won't be fighting. Call uh, someone out. Who do you want to fight? Mm, I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> uh, rising super bantamweight contender Sam Goodman returns to the ring, and he's fighting Schleaves, and there's been some great chat going on uh, leading up to this fight. Also... Fan favourite, Isaac Headsplitter Hardman, will be facing Venezuelan Andre Saavedra. Um, hearing big things out of Venezuela. Been talking to my contacts there. Uh, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. Uh, <laughs> head to our links. Uh, Venezuelan ed- guru. <laughs> 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 Order exclusively on main events with KO Sports. No KO subscription needed. Event details are on the show notes. Um, and look, three cracking games coming up this week uh, on KO, Raiders, Tigers, Cowboys, Knights, and Storm Warriors. The only way you can watch these games are on KO. Let's get into it. Eels defeat the Bulldogs 28 to 8. What's going on there, boys? We just had a Facebook memory pop up from one T. Williams from 2011. <laughs> Take us away. Some elite chat on the 11th oh, of March, 2011. Cool. Rugby League, we have missed you. Thanks for that insight, young Tim. <laughs> <laughs> As true today as the day it was written. Yeah. That's a timeless I quote, s- baby. I stand by. <laughs> it's aged well. That's a great call. A great call. <laughs> 12, 12 likes, popular one. <laughs> 12 likes is pretty good. Not bad 2011 for 2011 facey. Yeah, you're 11. Okay. Oh, don't, don't be too harsh on yourself, mate. You're a natural content creator. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> Eels defeat the Bulldogs 28-8. to eight. Um, Look, I think it's a pretty obvious, uh, I guess, analysis of this game. 60 minutes of just... Almost perfect round one footy. Mm. Super high completion rate, really smart offloads. I think at one stage they had 11 offloads in the first half. And I saw that and I'm like, that's the Eels. That's how Eels could push for a premiership 
is this unique offloading footy um, and to nail it as well as they did. So first 60 minutes, really, really, really good. Then there was a tw- 10 to 20 or 10 to 15 minute period where it was like they started fatigue, a lot of errors came in and they lost the momentum. But you couldn't ask for much more out of the Eels in their round one game, especially with Mitch Moses injured for most of the game. We'll get into like why he was left on there. Thoughts on this game, boys? Uh, yeah, I thought Parramatta looked really good. As you said, Mitchie Moses uh, carried around an injury for the vast majority of that game, and they just made do. Other guys stepped up, Dill Brown, Gutho. Mate, I thought the forward pack, I thought they looked so fit. Um, <laughs> Bryce Cartwright. Oh. I'm so happy for him. Mm. What the hell? Like, if you if you had said to someone three or four years ago, Bryce, Bryce Cartwright's going to come back and he's going to be arguably the best forward on the field in a Parramatta Doggies game, they would have said, mate, you are – like what crazy reality are you living in? He was outstanding. And it was it's not what's so impressive about Cartwright, it's not his natural like crazy flick out the back stuff that we're seeing. We're seeing like tough lines being run, tough defense, big plays like that. It's bloody impressive. And as well, I'll say it time and time again, Brad Arthur doesn't get enough credit for what he does with these back rowers. Imagine four years ago saying Isaiah Papali is going to be a Dally M back second rower. Yeah. Bryce Carwright is going to be up there with the best of them. Lane was oh. a smoky for origin last year uh, when yeah. he wasn't injured a couple of years ago. Hopgood was unknown until a year or so oh, ago. you knew him. Well, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I've loved the evolution of Bryce Cartwright over the past, you know, close to a decade now. Comes out of Penrith and he's this schoolboy superstar one of the brightest forward, like for young forwards in the game at the time, debuted for them and was just sensational. This offloading, fleet footed back rower that can play 5'8 and do it all. Signs on big money to the Gold Coast Titans. Shout out also to Shannon Boyd and Leilani Latu, <laughs> who also signed on big money. That went well. Good signings there. Um, <clears throat> flopped at the Titans. Mm. And you just, year on year, and you're sitting there going, what a waste of, what a waste of talent to what this bloke could have been. He comes back and he rolls up the sleeves a few years later and just gets through the tough stuff. We talk about it each and every week with certain back rolls in the game, boys. And he just remember what it was to be a rugby league player and you've got to be tough, you've got to run hard, do all that sort of stuff. Then last year, he settled back into the NRL nicely and he started to get a bit of that creative flair back into his game. Round one this year, ending the trial to be fair, you're just starting to see that youthful confidence and attacking upside where he's gone. I've got the hard stuff covered. Mm. Let's start getting a bit fancy. Let's, let's start playing a bit of football again. Yeah, he's one of the most exciting prospects in 2024. For sure. Me. And he would be in the top three players of the round. Mm. Again, there's no way you could have predicted this a couple of years ago. Bryce Carter would be in top three. And also, off the back of a season of almost becoming a gritty grinding back rower. Like he built the foundation last year of what he needed to do. Had every now and then he would have these great moments, but mostly it was just gritty grindy stuff. Then to come out in round one and do what he did, super, super impressive. So happy for him. And, you know, as you said, Guru, we we are quite, um, we can be quite critical of Brad Arthur's, you know, bench rotation selections or whatever. What we aren't critical of is his, his player development is honestly up there with the best coaches in the game. There's an argument to be made that outside of obviously Bellamy, that like form wise over the last few years, he's been the best player developer over the last few years. I'll tell you what, their New South Wales Cup on the weekend put on a show as well. And his young bloke, Matty Arthur. Really killed it. Very Mm. impressive. Um, He's a nine, isn't he? Yep. I I reckon that this is why they're not going all in on a nine somewhere because I reckon he's the plan in the next two years. And and he's the plan rightly so. Yep. No, no, it's got nothing to do with his last name being Arthur. He's a good Mm. footballer. How old is he? Like 19 or something? Yeah, 19, 20. He got knocked out in a trial, I think like first run or something like that. Uh, Correct. So good to see that he's bounced back, the big fella. Um, I actually, you know, in saying all that, I thought that was probably the best Joey Lussett game I've seen him play Mm. since (laughs) arriving at the heels. Ready to hear the stupidest thing of all time? I walked away from that game going, maybe you should be an 80 minute hooker. Yeah, so, <laughs> mate, so did I. So did I. Because um, I actually thought he was outstanding for him. He obviously had a try assist, had that great 40 20. Great 40 20. Um, he looked really good, really good. 29 tackles, only one missed, uh, 63 minutes. Um, I, I still like the rotation, but maybe they can build him into 
maybe it's, you know, towards the end of the year, they can build him into it and where they just have a guy on the bench that can jump in for 10 minutes or five minutes either side of half time. Um, but I thought he was really good. Yeah, he was good. This is where, like, having a guy like Randall up at the Titans or a Havili, I reckon it'd be perfect. Guy you can use in the middle forward or at nine, if yeah, need be. Perfect for him. Um, not quite sure if they've got that guy in their squad, though, realistically. But, uh, you know, I thought he was great last week. I didn't see that performance coming. Uh, another guy, and I'm we've got to give uh, Brad Arthur credit for this, bringing Polo off the bench. I loved it. Yeah, it was great. You know, you watch Parramatta over the last years, we talk about it a lot. When, the, when those two boys leave the field, him and Regan, there's a drop-off. I think he's just trying to avoid that. It's perfect. Well, look, yeah. Regan Campbell-Gillard, 48 minutes. Junior Polo, 43 minutes. Last year they played like, was it like 60 minutes each or something like that? Sure, even Ryan Madison coming off the bench, I think one of the better forwards in the game, played 32 minutes. Came on, had an immediate impact, had a really good try assist. Matto 32 minutes. That says a lot about your starting squad and your bench rotation. To a Lungy, 47 minutes. Like, look how averaged out these these minutes are. Mm, yeah. I think much better rotation. And I mean, like, you know, he turns to Joe O and says, hey, I need you to play the first 25 minutes. He's talking to a guy that's played State of Origin. Mm. Just get 25 good minutes out for me, and that's all we need. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like, a guy like Offen Gawe, like, I feel like if you just if you just have a coach that can back him for long enough for that 20 to 30 minute game, you're going to see him just grow and grow in confidence because I feel like there was a few years there where, like one year there, he was, he was Tiger's bloody best player, I thought, for a, for a year there. Then it didn't work out and he moved on. But I feel like his confidence just was just all over the shop. Whereas if he can just get, if the Eels can just somehow just build that confidence, he can give you a 20 to 30 of really, really good minutes. Another guy I want to give a rap to, mate, Morgan Harper. Mm. Mate, Talks he so was much great. more shit than he deserves and it's not even funny. It's he the haircut, good. baby. He's looking sharp. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I think ever since that Talakai game a couple of years ago, he just I think he's just become a target, and I personally think it's unfair. I, I think he's a solid footballer. I think he's a good little signing for Parramatta. Uh, he's not going to be the answer to all the problems, but fuck, worthwhile having him in your squad. I think absolutely. I mean, imagine he imagine they didn't sign him now. Who's like, there? Who's there? Yeah. So again, got to give Brad Arthur there for a good depth signing. I thought Will Pensini. I think there was only one error that he made that I was like, oh. But outside of that. He just looks like he's getting more and more confident in his ability to impact games with big plays. I thought he's really strong in contact as well. Um, but yeah, like so he might be the outside back that eventually becomes what they need. Uh, it's going to be interesting what they do with Bailey Simonson and Sean Russell, uh, who, who they decide uh, is going to be on that wing when Sivo comes well, back. Well, I think Simonson will go to centre for Harper. Okay, and they'll keep Russell there? Yeah. Do you reckon Harper, like, try, try, assist... Oh, I mean, like, I think Sevo is, miss, is missing the first three rounds or something. So mm. if Harper kills it, you know, it'll force a hand. But yeah. as it stands, I think Simonson will slot back into centre and Sevo straight to the wing. See, I'm, I, I don't mind Pensini Harper in the centres. So like, do I. Yep. I. I don't mind it. Um, but, at, yeah, probably at this stage you would probably shuffle mm. Harper out. But outside of that, uh, look, I thought Dylan Brown uh, looked outstanding. I think that, um, you know... If Moses had been playing, I think we would have seen a couple of try assists or maybe a couple of tries from Dylan Brown. If Mo Sorry, he was playing, but you know what I'm saying, like lead the team around. But for a bloke that was thrown in the deep end, essentially, mate, you've got to kick in round one, off the bat. Mm. I thought he did a pretty bloody good job. He did, he did. Can we get to the elephant in the room or what? Yeah, okay, Mitch Moses, round one, limping on the field from like 10 minutes. What's, what's Adam doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, mate, get him off. I... Uh, I couldn't believe it. And now they, they reckon he's cleared to play for round two. There's a bit of chat in the press conference. They, they asked uh, Brad Arthur about it a couple of times. And he goes, oh, that, the instruction was basically to, to stop kicking um, late in the game. But then he kept kicking. And he goes, well, that wasn't kind of part of the plan. But if, if it feels like to me, you're either injured or you're not injured. And, you know, this early in the season, you probably want to manage that, don't you? Well, yeah. yeah, the question you have to ask, Mitch, would be, mate, all right, we'll... Like when you come on that first time and you say, um, mate, how are you feeling? Do you want to come off? And he's like, no, nah, I'm good to go. Then the second and third time you come on because he's been limping and pressing it constantly, you say, mate, you either can get through the game and you stop pressing it and you stop limping or we get you off. Oh, mate, I, it, for me, I look through the team list every single week and honestly, there's six halfbacks in this competition that I'd be happy to have that I think I can win a comp with. Mitch Moses is one of them. There's not a hope in hell I'm leaving him out there. Oh. I'm not leaving it up to Mitch. No way. It's round one. And it's a groin, like it could get worse. Like, look, I'm sure that they've got an insight of maybe it's some kind of 
you know, groinal issue that can't get worse if he keeps playing or something and it's just a pain management thing? Maybe? It'd be something like that, but at the same time, you know, what if the assessment straight away was wrong and there was something more to it? There was a minor little little tear or something. You know, we know how bad groins can be. If they go, it could be 12 weeks plus sort of thing. They had Cardi there. He could have slotted in at 5'8". Dill Brown runs the show. It just seemed like an unnecessary risk. As you said, the, the medical side of things, they were probably sweet and confident with it. If he's playing this week, you know, maybe it was the right call, but it seemed very risky, didn't it? Which is very strange because it's not like – it's not like first 10 minutes he kind of did it and limped around a bit and then played the game out. Mm. Like, the whole game he was limping. The whole yeah. game he was touching his, his groin. It was 20 nil at the 65th minute. Yeah. Yeah. They must – look, to be in Eels' defence, they know way more than we do. Yeah. They must have heaps of information on it where it's essentially something that – because, look, if there's any chance that him staying out can tear it, there's no way they would have kept nah. him on the field. There's no yeah, way. You've you got to put faith in him, don't you? Like, yeah, it didn't surely. look good to the, uh, the average fan, but you've got to put faith on it. Surely, the they, yeah, there's no way. Because that's, that's too unreasonable. Yeah. That's too yeah. crazy. No, agreed. Um, yeah, look, a really, really good performance from the Eels and – what about Gutho? Honestly, Gutho is one of my favourite players to watch because he, whether it's the first minute, the 80th minute, whatever minute it is, Gutho is ripping and a tearing. Um, and I just, the goatee is powerful to me. It is. Every year, round one, almost getting a, a guaranteed new look Gutho. Aren't yeah. You? There's a new hairdo, there's someone else going. The goatee's got to be uh, probably my favourite look that he's debuted. So um, shout out to Gutho. It's quite strong and thick. It is thick. It's thick, it's pure, it's true. Yeah. And maybe maybe he's literally shaved it off Peyton's face and stuck it onto his. <laughs> goatee transplant. Yeah, that is. Going that. up to Townsville, got a goatee transplant. I tell you what, all I can grow is a goatee. So if anyone wants to open the market for goatee transplant, I would love that. <laughs> oh, maybe that could be uh, the the uh, the punting punishment for well, everyone has their punishment. Grow my goatee. You've got to grow your goatee out if you get done in the. Team. I have I have done that um, before, and it was it was disturbing. Yeah, <laughs> very disturbing. Had to change the rating to R eighteen. <laughs> got a bit of clarky about you. <laughs> <laughs> you grow your goatee out. I'll grow my mustache out. <laughs> <laughs> Horrific signs either way. Oh man. Guru shaves. <laughs> Just when you thought the heads couldn't get rougher on this panel, they can. When was the last they time you were bare around the chin, mate? Oh, it's been a while. Been a while, got a head like a bowling ball, so. <laughs> yeah. Why are we doing that? <laughs> you like should that. literally one day paint like your head in a bowling ball, shave your beard, <laughs> and then put two holes there. So when you close your eyes, it's actually like a bowling ball. <laughs> 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 uh, what a look. <laughs> it's great stuff. It's Homer. Great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, have we all seen the photo of me without a beard? We don't need to see that again. Oh, we have. It looks like Hogwarts, Hogwarts student. <laughs> <laughs> Real uh, Hufflepuff uh, Quidditch CBA sort of. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's hilarious? So Shandor Earl come on the show a couple of weeks ago and just like an actual Adonis, like we're talking like six foot two, shred out of his mind, Jack tatted out of his mind. Anyway, uh, one of the comments is, damn, he looks like Hammy Goodman. <laughs> No, no way. From Hammy Goodman. <laughs> Good to see my burner has been unblocked on the, uh, on the page. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> that put a pep in your step. It certainly has. <laughs> oh, well, thanks to the team at uh, Musashi. Hopefully I won't be too far and I'll be... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, now, in regards to the Eels, it's just about keeping this standard now. You know, we've seen this against the Panthers where they have this ability to play top, top, Top tier premiership level um, footy. And again, being nitpicky, but even in that same game, they played 60 minutes of this ruthless footy where you're like, arguably the best performance of the week. And then 20 minutes where it just fell off a cliff. Not off, off a cliff, but you know, Bulldogs got back in the game. Um, so we just need to make sure that this is week in, week out now. We need to put a counter on the amount of times we declare Parramatta contenders and then uh, go back and call them pretenders a week later. It's, yeah. it's going to be on and off like it has been for three years. I will say, though, the concerns were depth in the forward rotation. Of the information we've got so far from preseason and round one, it's looking pretty bloody good in the depth forward rotation. Mm. At the moment. It's awesome. I mean, Ogden didn't even play, and he was one of their best forwards of the, the preseason. And... Um, <coughs> Uh, Wittemar Gregg yeah. as well. Wittemar Gregg, time. yep. Awesome depth. Uh, Blaze to uh, Talani, obviously he's a back, but the fact that he's at number 18, that he's 18th man, shows that maybe he will sort their outside back 
depth as well. Yeah, and if the Brad Arthur history is anything to go by, I cannot wait to watch Kelma Tualangi throughout the year. Yeah. yeah, I think he's in for a big one. Yep. That first trial against the Raiders was outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding. Uh, now, on to the doggies. Tough one to talk about because defensively, even though they lost 20, uh, 26 to 8, I thought they did show way more guts than they would have shown last year. I thought that, you know, at one point, I think they had 37% possession of the ball in the first half or something like that, and they were only down, was it like a try? What was it? Um, it's 14 nil at half time. Sorry, 14 nil at half time. So two tries. So two tries and a conversion. To only have the ball 37% possession, to be against a side like the Eels that they, they should be pushing for a premiership, at the very least a top six side at, at their best, isn't too bad in my opinion. And people, I know Doggies fans, they get frustrated because they're thinking, I'm, I'm not excusing it, but it's a reality. Like this roster isn't on the level of the Eels roster and it's also not a top eight level roster. So it's like 14 nil down with that little possession. I thought they showed a lot of grit and defense. But with that being said, there are some really big questions around key positions that is my most concern. It's actually not the result that is my biggest concern. It's the fact that we're in round one and I'm no closer to knowing what their best 17 is than I was when all the signings happened and everything like that. Um, so not a disaster, but also some questions that I thought would probably be answered well, closer to answered in the preseason and in round one. Boys, what do you think about the doggies? Mate, I personally thought Canterbury were the most frustrating team to watch over the entire weekend. Just you've got all these superstars that don't get the football. Like uh, Matt Burton hardly crossed the tram line down his edge the entire game. You got Hutcho, you know, running around all over the place. You got you got all these utilities in the world. I, I can't believe Reid Marnie's forced to play eighty minutes still. That is mind blowing to me. Like, when you have a look at the bench they ran with, with Jamin Salmon and with Kurt Mann on the side, and Reid Marnie has to play 80 minutes where he's missing 10 tackles, like, didn't didn't we learn this last year? I don't understand the Reid. Reid Marnie, 80 minutes, like, just why? I just don't get it. It makes no sense to me. It, it clearly didn't – it's too much for him. Like, give him 60 minutes of good quality work. And in regards to what you were saying, um, you know, frustrating – that, that is what I'm saying. You know, you look at their six and seven, still not sorted. Should Sexton be in it? Should Burton be in it? Don't know. You look at their fullback, still not sorted. And you've got key signings in key positions not getting the ball. So it's like, okay, so those key signings in those key positions, should they be in those – sorry, key signings in those positions, should they be in different positions? Um, so uh, it's a mixed bag for me. It's a really mixed bag for me. What do you reckon, Timmy? Yeah, look, firstly, touching on what you already did, Campion, I think the doggies showed grit. They had a crack. They had some decent off moments. They showed spirit. That's what you want to see as a supporter, a lot of it. As you mentioned, Para, who are a very good football side, completed at 89%, 41 of 46 sets. They had 59% possession for the game. Mm. They're not losing to many teams on the weekend with numbers like that. Doggies, 41 possession. Mate, I think, just think they picked the wrong team. Mm. I really do. I don't think Blake Taff is their best fullback to start with. I would have Stephen Crichton starting ahead of him. Connor Tracy didn't play New Wales Cup, so he's still probably coming back from injury, but I would have Connor Tracy ahead of him. This is not a knock on Blake Taff. I think he's a very solid footballer, but I do think that he's a very good backup at the moment. He'll come in and do a terrific job for you, but going into a season with really quality options around him, uh, Salmon was good during the preseason, had some nice enough moments here as that ball playing lock, but you've got Kurt Mann there, you've got Josh Curran, who I think are better starting 13s, particularly for that tough first 20 minutes of the game. I just don't agree with a lot of the, the selections they've gone with. Guru, you touched on Matty Burton, and the signs, it wasn't a one off game where he sits outside his tram lines and doesn't get involved. The signs were there in both the preseason trials where his involvement wasn't there. I'm like, you know, he's arguably your best player. And there's like no, just like there's no ga game plan to really get him involved. I well, just don't think they picked the best well, team they could have. With Burton, like if it was the last year that this happened, I'd be like, look, all different partners or whatever. But I think Burton, and maybe he's being directed specifically by Seraldo. So maybe it's not a Burton situation. Maybe it's a Seraldo being very firm about his game plan and what he wants to build towards. But if that isn't the case, if I'm Burton, mate, I'm just getting in there and taking hit ups. Mm. Just take hit-ups. Yeah. Just get the ball one off the ruck and just run at your opposing three or f like whoever it is. And that's 
that's what makes me think it has to be Serraldo telling him to do this. Surely. I don't look at Matt Burton and go, he's not a guy that when his team's down, he's happy to sit in the tram line and not mm. move from there. Well, like how often when the Storm are just under the pump, Munster will just go and take the ball. Yeah. Like he'll just go, mate, yeah. fucking give me the ball. And he'll force his way into the game. And I think with Birdo, it has to be a direction from Serraldo to stay out there. There's no way a guy of his yeah. that loves footy as much as he does but, would just sit yeah, out in the edge. Just, even things like they pick a four middle four bench. You, talk, you spoke about... Uh, Marnie, not, Marnie playing 80 minutes again. And then I look at something like, I'm very aware that the doggies are light on middles this year. We know that. But you've got Poasso, Farmer Silly. He plays 14 minutes in his first stint. I'm like, at NRL level, surely you can get more than 14 minutes out of a starting front row. Played 20 yeah. minutes all up. Yeah, so he played 14 and he came back on and played four minutes later on. It's like, a lot of things didn't make sense to me with that lineup for round one because there's so much talent in the roster. There's a good football side in there. I just don't think they went out with their strongest 17. Was, did I miss, did Max King get an injury or HIA or, uh, like, he's the only genuine middle forward in the side for me. He played 42 minutes. I, I didn't see yeah, anything amiss. I, I didn't, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe I, not. I, I didn't think he did watching it live. I was, but, <laughs> like, I, ju I just can't make sense of so many of their decisions. And like, Fox went moves. off after 40 and I think Salmon slid out to the yeah, wing. Yeah, Salmon was on So the Salmon end, went 80. But Salmon had also still played every minute to that point. Some weird stuff going and on. And you saw Josh Curran. He came on as a genuine front row forward mm. when he came on the field. That was before the Josh Adokar stuff happened. I I also, similar to Mitch Moses, I can't believe they left Josh Adokar out there for as long as they did. Yeah, I was a bit and surprised. And just on far, half time, they hit him with a cutout ball <laughs> on his bad side. Fuck. Yeah, that was perplexing. And interesting, Connor Tracy, 18th man, but didn't play on the weekend. Yeah. That's weird. Hasn't played a game yet this year, Tracy. Because, um, like, if someone gets injured, he's – sorry, if they, you know, have in. to activate 18th man, he's, like, he's in. Yeah. When you consider, once again, the amount of utilities they have, you'd, you'd think as an 18th man you would have picked someone mm. played footy this year, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, look, we've been uh, – look, we're, we're probably – we're repeating what we've said pretty much all preseason before a ball was kicked. You know, some of these selections, we would go in a different direction. But I'm a glass half full guy. I thought they did show grit. And I know it's easy to just put shit on the Bulldogs because, you know, there's been all this talk and Gus is involved and it's a new rookie coach. And rightly so, rightly so. They, they've struggled for so long. But I thought they worked their absolute backsides off, especially in that first half. And with 10 to go, they're down 20 to 8. They've got eels under the pump. Mm. They score a try there. Instead, they dropped the ball and Eel scored. It's a 12-point turnaround. I, I look, I'm not making excuses for them. They're pretending they had a good, like they were good all round. But I don't think it's as doom as gloom as some of the feedback that I've seen on the internet. There was plenty of character from the dogs. I they showed so. ticker. They had a crack. There's yeah. no doubt in that. And that goes a long way. And that's what you want to see round one. Sure, execution might not have been there. There were some issues. But the attitude's good. Mm. Just need to fine-tune a lot of things. I will say, if I get to round 10 and Birdo is still not being... Either he's choosing not to swing either side or he's being told to, mate, just put him in the centres. Like, put him in the centres and get Sexton and, and Hutcho in there. You're a patient man, Kempi. I'm not waiting till round 10. I, I, the only reason I'd wait as long as to round 10 is because he's the future, the, the next 10 years at the club. So it's like, if it does work, the dividends it'll pay in the next, you know, four or five years could be quite substantial. But I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. The thing in his defence that I'm in his defence is he's had literally like, what, a thousand different halves pairings? Yep. And I do get the feeling he's being told to stand out there. Surely he's not just... But it's like, I'm not against moving him from 5'8", but like, I think we all sort of said in the pre-season, we wanted to see this great ball running, big body, be given a crack at 5'8". But then he's, he's basically playing as a bloody centre as it is. So it's like, if you're going to play him as a centre and not allow him well, any sort of freedom to... Do anything. Just, we'll just pick him at centre. Yeah, pick him at centre. That's essentially what he's doing. Yeah, he's playing centre. Waiting yeah. out there and then every now and again putting a bomb up. So weird. Yeah. It's very strange. And if that is the case, as we, we all just said, you may as well get Sexton and um, Hutcho in there because they're out and out ball players mm. that that will, their job is to feed the outside men well, pill. Like Drew Hutchinson, who's been in and out of first grade his entire career. How much pressure does that put on him? Yeah. Like Sexton, New Wales Cup on the weekend, scored one, set one up. 38-36 that game. Good one for the fans. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, like a lot of pressure on Hacho. What's uh, Papali's numbers like? Very good, I believe. Three line assists, two try assists. 
And, yeah, not bad going. Look, I, I would have been very tempted to even just put him in round one. Honestly. Um, just Taff had, unfortunately, not the best last trial. Um, and I think the Taff needs some time in reserve grade to get that confidence back. We saw that confidence a little bit rattled heading into round one as well when he was playing. He dropped his first ball in that tackle, I'm pretty sure. I've spoken to numerous people who reckon his best position is in the halves. Yeah. Played a lot of juniors there and killed it. I wouldn't mind him at six. Mm. I wouldn't mind him at six. I'm yeah. not saying I've seen or anything like that, but a lot of... Well, Rue, you reckon he's a six, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably Rue that told me. Probably. <laughs> um, anything else on the doggies, boys? No. But no. yeah, well, I'm a glass half full guy. They showed a bunch of ticker. They they didn't look like a team that weren't working for their coach. Um, it just looked like there was, in our opinion, there were certain selections and game plans that were still not understanding. And maybe the vision for Serraldo is a long term vision, and he's willing to take the hits now for something you know in 24 months or something like that. Speaking of ticker, just last guy I want to t- touch on Jacob Kiraz. Christ, he gets through some work. I love him. He's a goer. He is an absolute goer. 119 runs, 157 metres, 50 post contact, four tackle breaks, an offload, 14 tackles, only one miss. Uh, just looking at here. Reed Marnie, 51 tackles, 10. Like, I don't want Reed Marnie making 50 tackles a week. It, I just think the game is way too fast for that these days. Why is Kurt Mann not going in for 15, 20 minutes? Yeah, and Kurt Mann was great when he came on. He was their, probably their best player. Hopefully, to their credit, the Josh Adokar injury threw that out. I'm hoping. Well, but I'm, I have trouble believing that. Well, so Josh honest. had a car they reckon is sweet to just get needled and go. Wow. Sorry, I meant like as far as their interchange went on the weekend, maybe they were planning to not play Reed Marnie for 80, then they had to move Sam. That's a great point. That is fair. So to Serraldo's defense, maybe that <laughs> maybe. was the plan. I'm, and Curran did get injured. Curran did get injured, I'm pretty sure. No, I think Curran played the rest of the game, didn't he? He went through, yeah. Yeah, he played the whole thing. I'm pretty sure he got injured. I, I listened to the press conference and they reckon he's – something happened to Curran. Pretty sure. He went on in the 15th and played 60. I know that he so. played the game out. I yeah, don't he, might, he might have picked up an injury during, but yeah. he didn't yeah. play the game out. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. I thought I thought he said in the press conference Curran was injured, but clearly not. Uh, so interesting what they do next week in regards to do they start Salmon at 13 or Curran at 13 because Curran was pretty good when he came on. Yeah, he looks really good. But I uh, yeah, I do wonder if they are just lacking the middle forwards that maybe they do just keep using Curran as a front row forward. It's not what I would do, but it would <laughs> surprise me if that's what they do. I mean, he has enough ticket to do it, that's for sure. I'll yeah. be honest. I'd... I've always been a Kurt Mann fan, mm. and I, I'm not saying I'd do it straight away, but I'm not against, if you want just Josh Curran as a big minute, just middle to help that, and they really want this ball playing lock, you know, Salmon has spent probably more time in the halves than Kurt Mann, who's played every position over his career, but I do think you'll probably get more in defence and like just penetrating the line as a running game with Kurt Mann as a 13 than Salmon. Mm. I'm not saying Salmon can't do the job, but I think he's probably a more solid more traditional middle than Salmon. Mm. Um, so I don't hate the idea of that if that's the direction they want to go with the ball playing lock and then you just have Curran playing 50 minutes as an out-and-out middle. Mm. Well, uh, Kurt Mann did, I think, 35 tackles, zero missed. Which is a pretty bloody good effort through the middle there. Uh, anyway, hopefully Doggies can uh, bounce back. But look, there's some silver linings there if you want to look for it. A few just selections. It's going to be interesting over the next few weeks. Now, on to Dragons v Titans. Don't forget... Grab a case of bloke beer from your local, the beer of rugby league. Head to our website for a store locator. Also, we're in every celebrations IGA plus liquor. We're in Bottleos, you name it, liquor legends. Get your local, grab a case of bloke beer. Dragons defeat the Titans 28 to 4. And I've got to be honest, guys, I tipped the Titans, but I actually did put money on Dragons 13 plus. Um, 7.25. Thanks for coming, baby. Thanks for coming. Good punting, that. It's, it's you know some of us get rugby league, some of us don't. Some of us, it's just the way it is. It's, it's, it's almost a natural gift. So you tip the Titans, you bet on the Dragons, because you know what? <laughs> Splinters Kempe yeah, sitting wow. on the fence. No, no, yeah, I've seen good. it all. Yeah, two steps behind me. You know what it is, bloke. Huge community. I didn't want to bring the price in. I didn't want to bring the price. In. <laughs> <laughs> the big uh, market manipulator. <laughs> <laughs> there might be an inquiry into my manipulation. Apologies, apologies. Uh, to be honest though. Uh, the more I thought about it after our Monday show and then obviously seeing uh, Foran got ruled out uh, or that he was in doubt. I thought, he, yeah, he was in doubt or whatever. That was when I was like, ooh, okay, this is going to be tough. And then I don't know, just as the week wore and I was like, ah, oh, Dragons look pretty good. Anyway, 
All that aside, Dragons looked absolutely outstanding. We spoke about it earlier, but the fact that they've, they look to have found an identity so quick is in a testament to a guy like Shane Flanagan that has absolutely whipped them into shape. They, uh, all the players where you would ask the question, if this player can have the best year of their career, these guys might be dogfighting for their seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth position. Well, in one game, and it's only one game, but there's an argument to be made. Sloan had the best game of his career. Lomax had the best game of his career. Uh, Flanagan was outstanding at six. Hunt looks like he's fully committed. Uh, Molo was great. Sorry? Little. Little was great. So, like, all those questions, at least for round one, you couldn't have got a more resounding positive answer as the Dragons found. Yeah, for sure. I was very impressed with them. I actually... Um you know, I had a look at the Canberra Raiders and their performance and their huge win over the Newcastle Knights this week, and I thought, you know, very impressive, but a lot of kicks, a lot of offloads, a lot of sort of unorthodox footy. The Dragons look like every single person knew their role and just had it all down to a T. Honestly, they had some of the more slick attack compared to any side in round one. Yeah, I, I thought they were very impressive. I thought the halves both looked in sync. Jacob Little looked unreal. What about F- Fatella Mariner and Eisenhut? Yeah, what the, oh. like, I tell you what, it sounds funny saying this about a premiership winning coach, but far out, how high will the stocks rise of Shane Flanagan if this side even is competing for a top eight spot by the end of the year? And, you know, he's walking in to a roster that he didn't really build. Mm. And he's been playing catch up pretty much of like going in, recruiting. I mean, he got Eisenhuth late, I'm pretty sure. He got Fatella Mariner, he got late. Uh, Leilua, late. Obviously, Leilua didn't play. Um, just what a performance by the Dragons. And, it just shows you that, you know, teams that can look like, look, just looking at their roster, I just don't know how they score points or just one or two little additions can completely change our outlook. Then you go to the other side, Jaden Sewer. Looking back to career best form as well, yeah. I thought they were absolutely outstanding. Their, their explosiveness through the middle, their aggression, their line speed. I mean, they ticked all the boxes they needed to tick. I really thought the Dragons, they were probably, I don't know if they were the best team of round one, but they were absolutely the most surprising performance of round one. Now, did I think they could go up and beat the Titans? Of course I did. But did I think they'd do it in such a dominant fashion? I don't think so. Really, really impressive. Yeah, I, I'm blown away. I, I thought I tipped them for the wooden spooners. I'm sure a lot of us did. Um, I, do, I do want to see this over a long period of time. Obviously, that's a given. Yeah, that's a given. So, yeah. Yep. Um, same with any other team in this competition. Uh, but. I mean, you couldn't ask the Dragons to tick any more boxes than what they have already. I mentioned it before. They lure, Laurie, Harm Saleh. Three proper forwards in this competition to come back in. Um, three starting forwards, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, I did think it was interesting. Like Jack DeBellin sort of moved into a front row forward role and Tommy Eisenhuth mm. jumped into like a 13 role. Yeah. I didn't see that coming in any way, shape or form, no. but... God, it looked good. He, he like I, I think Tommy Eisenhuth has given him a real headache to work out. And DeBellin only playing fifty-seven minutes. Usually, he's bloody, you know, way more minutes than that. Well, if you listen to Kyle Flanagan, whenever he, whenever he was commentating a Dragons game last year, he constantly bagged how many minutes Jack DeBellin was playing. Yeah, was okay. over. So that didn't surprise me because mm. he was very vocal about it in, in commentary last year. And it it could be much better for JDB. Well, again, it's it's that idea of. You know, sometimes less is more. Like forcing your top tier players to get out there and just absolutely get through the washing machine every week. It's just not good long term unless they are of, you know, elite nature, very young, and it just seems to suit their game. What do you think of the Dragons, Amy? Well, I was a little bit concerned, if I'm honest with you, because uh, I was kind of hoping they would be taking the spoon away from the Tigers. We've been battling with them for the last couple of years, but, geez, they look good. You mentioned it. I didn't think they would win 13-plus either, but they did. They were pretty good against a great outfit in the Tigers in the trials. Uh, so we knew that they were actually <laughs> – had their had their stuff together, you know, okay. going into the season. Um, so you reckon that's that means the Tigers are even better because they were against. You the, just you wait till we go down to Canberra Stadium ambush at uh, GIO this weekend. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But they they were good, and you you spot on. Like they've got a lot of guys there with a lot of potential, but very rarely last year in particular or the year before um, did they all have a good game at the same time. Mm. But we saw like you peeled off all the names already, but. They all probably played the best game that we've seen a lot of them play in, in the last 12 months. So um, Guru's spot on. The, the consistency will be the thing. But, um, you know, even if three or four of them are, are having good games like that, um, you know, week in, week out, they're, that, they're potentially going to be a handful. They've got the Dolphins this week who were a little bit um, underwhelming in, in their first game as well. So 
every chance they could be two and zip and um, all of a sudden uh, looking nowhere near as bad as people thought. They've already eased a little bit in the spoon uh, market. They're out now to about $3.70, um, which unfortunately leaves the Tigers there at outright <laughs> favourites. But um, that's, that's, a big, that's a big move after one week of footy. Yep. <laughs> the Tigers became spoon favourites. They didn't even play on the weekend. Yeah, I know. And they got a win. They got two points. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, all, you know what? All should be good in the world. You know, it's, it's round <laughs> one, uh, end of round one, Monday morning. The Tigers are ninth with a four and against a zero. We're, um, we're back where we belong. You know? <laughs> so. They had the dragon. So going to this game, fast, dry, great point scoring service against the Titans who have a really good attacking team. Granted, two of their biggest attacking weapons in for feeder, four and out. On top of that, Jaden Campbell. They had, I think it was 13 or 14 errors, the Dragons. You sort of look at that and you go, geez, could have been ugly. One line break conceded against the Titans in this game. That's outstanding. And it's not like the Titans don't have bloody good outside Still backs attacking. to do it. Yeah. Yep. Um, so really good performance. I mean, off the top, a massive credit to Sloan. Um, you know, we've spoken about him quite a lot, how much we love his potential, but it's just been so up and down and a lot of pressure heading into round one. And even though I'm not sure about you boys, but I would have personally started the year with Lomax at fullback. You've got to give um, Flano credit. Like he went all in. This was, this was a mm. big decision that... Look, the safe decision for Flanagan heading into round one is to put Lomax at fullback. That keeps the media off his back. That keeps the fans off his back because it's like, you know, the, me the fans essentially were like, we have to try something other than Sloan because it just hasn't seemed to work. Whereas Flanagan's gone, nah. You know, yes, it's been a few years now where Sloan's been a bit up and down, but I'm going to back you all the way. And at this stage, it has paid off big time. Now, the thing is, is not a single person watching rugby league is surprised at Sloan playing like this. We all know he's this good. The challenge for Sloan now is a month of this, is two months of this, a whole season of this. That's going to be the challenge for Sloan. Yeah, and I would assume, mate, Toro Sloan's probably learned the hard way over the last two or three years that I'm sure he would know that's his challenge. Mm. I mean, for me, like watching that, three tries, very impressive. I just love that he had one error in the game. Yeah. Mm. That's the thing that stood out to me. And you just want to see, he doesn't have to score three tries every week, but if he can just be solid and show a jersey and just be consistent every week for the next eight, that's how Tyrell Sloan will go places. Because, mate, all, all, like the stuff he can do naturally, that's the hardest bit for guys to get. I think, I think we all sat here in the preseason. We're all pretty adamant. We're like, put Sloan in reserve grade. Let him, you know, fine tune his game. Put, give Lomax the crack at fullback. And as you said, Campy, it's a one game sample size. He was quite good in the second uh, preseason challenge game, but small sample size. But so far, you said, like, Lomax didn't even spend time at fullback in the trials. We're like, surely you're getting him a bit of time there. Yeah. And Flannel was like, nah. Sloan's my number one. It's his spot to lose, and I'm giving him every chance. One from one, he's come out and brained it, and it's like, well, impressive. And to be fair, you know, initially, that was our biggest gripe with Griffin when we were like, mate, give Sloan a bloody crack. Like, mm. And granted, it, he's had a fair few cracks since then, mm. but initially that was our concern with um, Anthony Griffin was like, give him like one or two games and you're punting him. How's it going to help a young kid's development? And so maybe the key to all this was – a fresh start with a coach that fully backed him in and just said, mate, you're my man. My favourite part of Sloan game, uh, Sloan's game was two try savers in the friggin' first half. Yep. Like that, he put his body in front and essentially one-on-one -on -one tackles at the very least and saved a couple of tries. Like we all know his attack is brilliant. So low amount of errors plus try savers, that's a good sign for uh, the Dragons. Um, now we'll talk about Lomax. I mean... What a performance for a guy that apparently wasn't happy, didn't want to play on the wing. Uh, look, maybe he wasn't happy. Maybe he was a bit frustrated he wasn't in the centres. But what I love about this is Lomax has said through his actions that, yeah, I'm, I could be a little bit frustrated that I'm not in centres, but doesn't mean I'm not going to go out there and rip and tear for the team. Mm. And I thought that was the best attitude that Lomax has shown in a very long mm. time. And if he keeps this attitude... He will be in Origin Talks. Like, that was an incredible performance by Lomax. Yeah, it was unreal. And uh, if you have a look at the stat sheet, you'll notice next to Lomax's name, it's got four errors. I think it was all four of those errors came from high balls and, high balls yeah. and getting under them. So don't get carried away with that sort of stuff. And mate, the amount of tries they're going to score off kicks this year. Even with him, like, you don't even have to kick it into his corner. You just kick it on his half of the field. Yeah, <laughs> so he'll get make something out of it. And, like, think as a defender, you know, usually you might have a tall kind of rangy winger so they might not be as strong in contact because you can get under them. Whereas when you look at Lomax, the, how well-rounded he is. So he's also, he's got strength in contact. He's got great footwork. 
He's got a great offload. He's good under the high ball. Like he has so many weapons that as a winger, you've got to you've got to be constantly on guard as to which weapon he's going to choose to use in that set. Uh, he'll be he'll be a great finisher. I think he's going to have a big work rate. I can see him being one of them wingers that has 20 plus runs a game, which will take so much pressure off this forward pack. Well, I'm telling you, I'm paying way more money for this version of Lomax than I am the center that's got a really good flick pass that can set up prices. Yep. Like this is this version of Lomax okay. is way more valuable on the open market than the really good center that has a good flick pass version of in Lomax. In an ordinary dragon side in recent years, it's a hard gig being a centre, oh. getting that early ball. There's a lot of pressure for you to create something. On the wing, you just put him in a little bit of space with a little bit of an overlap or chasing the kick, whatever it might be. Or, you know, being on, on the wing, it, it allows him to roam around a little bit more and be a bit more free. Yeah. Good things will happen. We saw it towards the end of the game. I think he was coming in for an inside ball. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, really, really happy for both Lomax and Sloan because – there's so much, like, at a, at a bottom-tier club, the amount of talk and pressure around them was, was quite substantial. And they have responded in kind and said, all right, all that chat, we'll show you guys what the reality is. And they've nailed it. Um, another guy, Flanagan. Probably the best Flanagan's looked in, what do you reckon, four or five years? I think so. Easily. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, he, he's doing exactly what Benny Hunt needs in good ball, and that's just giving him good ball. Like, you know, Benny Hunt has been... Because he is quite a unique seven, he hasn't really had a halves partner that also can be a good ball player. Like Amon is more of a ball running half. So usually Hunt is trying to put him in position. Whereas if you've got a guy like Flanagan, who, look, I'm going to be honest, I think Flanagan is playing seven. He just has a six jersey on his back. Mm -hmm. um, but, at the, you know, that's neither here nor there. If you put Flanagan that can just get deep into the line, give him good quality ball, Benny Hunt will make it work. Uh, ended up having, I think, two tries assists in this game Benny Hunt yep two try assists in this game 117 24 runs Hunt like honestly it reads like a 5-8 stats to be honest um, then he has 70 tackles only one miss a line break assist uh, and an offload bloody good stuff yeah, unreal. And once again, credit to Shane Flanagan. Uh, I think he's a little bit outside the box there with how he's working. Um, we want to see it long term, but <laughs> you can only judge them on what we've seen so far. They've ticked all the boxes. And, and we sat there and went like, even the move that Jack Bird just sent, you go, we were all, none of us were against it by any means. But you're like, do they just need his strike in the pack on the edge there? Now all of a sudden you've got Sua, who looks tremendous. Fatala Mariner, who looked dead oh. and buried in his career, who was terrific on the edge. You've got Luciano Lay Lua to come back into the team. All of a sudden, like, that looks like a master stroke. They've got Lomax to the wing, Sloan one for one, killing it at fullback. Well, let, let's have a look at this. So at full strength, they will have they will have either Molo or Eisenhuth starting off the bench. Um, and they will have Raymond Fatella Marin up, probably starting off the bench. Like that, that bench becomes a strong bench mm. now. Yeah, very with, strong. With a full strength side, if they can keep this form up. But yeah, like... Where did that come from? I mean, we know where it come from with RFM. Like, he has always had that talent, but we haven't seen that for, what do you reckon, three years? <laughs> I think where did it come from is completely fair. We're, like, we haven't seen close to that in years since no. Dean Pay was coaching him. Every time he, <laughs> every time he touched the ball, he was dangerous. Yep. Yeah. Like, every single time you're going, oh, shit. Um, and so, yeah, that's great stuff. Little, you know, outstanding as well. Just um, want to see him stay fit, don't you? Yeah. Such a good footballer. Just stay on the park, little fella. Another positive for the the Dragons is um, Fafita, Viliami Fafita, got a debut, got through his work. So that's another young four that's being blooded and getting through his work in a win for the side. I like the look of him. He didn't get to play too many minutes, but I, I think he's got a future. Well, like, the good thing for the Dragons is, is if they keep playing like this, they have the luxury of easing him into it, you know? Yeah. Whereas the Dragons of you know, last year are almost desperate for an explosive forward to stand out. Uh, so really, really good stuff. I mean, yeah, what a bloody good performance for the. Uh, I mean, what's crazy is out of all those outside backs, you probably would have tipped Ravalawa mm. to have the most meters, and he had the least by a substantial margin. Yeah, um, which is it's it shows you how strong that this this back is. Obviously, shout out to Suli. How yep. fit do they all look with him being the pin-up boy for it? Sully is the fittest I've ever seen that man. I will say, the commentators kept saying like, oh, Sully not known for his work out of his own end. I was like, crap. Uh, 
Pretty sure he's only known for his fucking yeah. road. That's what he does the best. Mm. He's coming out of his own end, the big beast. He's had a ton of runs in recent years. Yeah, like, like that's he's been his go-to. Yeah. In, if anything, the question with Suli is just defensive reach sometimes. Yeah. Um, over 200 metres. He also diffused a beautiful bomb. I don't know if you saw that as oh, well. Over his head. Yep. Timmy and I have got our... Um, bloke AFL side chat that we were having a quick chat in. <laughs> and um, like, how about the and clunk tell, on this bloke? into your shit. How about the clunk on this bloke? And uh, yeah. He, he Sydney looks, Swan colours too. Looks good in red and white. Would love, <laughs> love to have you on, on board down there. Uh, no, he, he's just like a credit. You said it in the preseason though. Credit to him. Like from where he's been a couple of years yeah. ago, Moses Suli. Looks fit, looks good. Ran for over 200 metres. Took a great clunk. Um, yeah, he's, he's having a great, <laughs> great, great 2024. Clunk. Jimmy oh. and I refer to it as a clunk in the uh, you know. NFL chat. <laughs> You know I don't speak Spanish, Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Molo brothers, how good have they been? Yeah, unreal. Uh, there's always just been something about those two, hasn't there? Yeah. yeah like, especially Michael Molo, a young fella coming through. Um, like, almost unsung heroes. I thought Francis was good last year too. Both got nice hands too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so he averaged 131 metres last year and 143 the year before from centre. Bloody good going. It's, it sounds like a centre that gets through his work out of his own hand. Anyway, yeah, great stuff for the Dragons. Really exciting. And look, as Dragons fan, there's going to be people that are going to try to take the shine off the win and go, oh, you've got to do it for all season. Just enjoy it. Like, played really well. Yes, we hope that they can be consistent for the rest of the year. But at the end of the day, from what we've seen, fantastic performance. And there's really – like, out of that performance, the only thing you could kind of nitpick at – Maybe a high, like 78% completion, but I'm pretty happy with that. Mate, I look at the 28 to 4 line, 28 to 4 score line and see that completion of 78 and go, if they can up that, why not more? Like, yeah. What a good sign. Now, on to the Titans. Uh, yeah, really disappointing. Um, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, on that completion rate, is that a bit thrown out because of the amount of times Lomax dropped the ball on last tackle too? Yeah, maybe. I reckon there's a sniff that it might be. Does it does it drop the ball in the fifth count as a because then it just restart like a great question. I would have thought if it's a drop the ball the on fifth, the fifth it tackle, it's a completion. Yeah, I don't. I think, I'm not sure. It's great. I question. think it'd be a completion, wouldn't it? Because it's just like you've kicking. gotten through your set. Yeah, you gotten through the set. Be interesting to find out. Yeah, neither would shock me. Um, what I do know, and they were saying, I think Vossi was saying it. If you get a six again, that can yeah. counts as a completion. So sometimes that can be a bit deceptive. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you can get like three tackles in, get a uh, six again. That's one set Complete completed. For sure. Um, and so you're basically, when you complete that set, you're getting two for one pretty much. Yeah, it sounds like you get a, mate, same concept, but the first tackle penalty. Bad bundo. Two for one, completion sets. Yeah. <laughs> Back to you, mate. Your chat was better than mine. <laughs> um, now to the Titans. I'm not necessarily disappointed at the result. Like, I am disappointed, but that's not the concerning thing for me. The concerning thing for me is that, yes, look, I'm fully going to grant missing super, super key players uh, in their, their side. But I didn't see a much different Titan side that looks to have reacted to Desi Hasler as I thought would be. Whereas I look across the other side, that's a dragon side that absolutely there is no denying has reacted to Flanagan as a head coach. That's, so that's my biggest concern that a, a forward pack that we thought is arguably one of the best, if not the best young fullback in the comp, really didn't fire a shot that is the most concerning part yes it's just one game and maybe desi's building into the season but i was a bit surprised that i didn't see more of a reaction from desi without completely just repeating everything you said i agree when i look at the titans i think of their top five best players three of them weren't there and one of them was playing out of position um i, I don't look into this one too much it is only one game but i agree with you i expected a desi has team to at least in defense really show up and show some ticker. It just looked different, but they didn't. They look. looked exactly the same, oh. unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And it's all good and well to, you know, say, sure, if feeder was out and Foran's out and that, but you can't, you know, if you're a decent football side, you can't have this reliance. Like, maybe in attack, you're clunkier and you struggle to score points without key players, but your defence should still be okay. Mm. Like, as great as the Dragons were, the reality is that we were sitting here a week ago and every pundit in rugby league was tipping them for the wooden spoon and they've conceded 28 points at home and put four points themselves on the board. Like, it's so disappointing. Kieran Foran, who, to his credit, he's been really durable the last three years, but we know what he brings in attack on that left edge. We know what he brings defensively on that left edge, but he's a, he's a veteran of the game. He's had his injury troubles over the years. 
like they can't rely on him to be there all year because he probably won't be. Like. See, that's that's the hugest concern. Obviously, you know, not reacting to Desi, but unfortunately, that that young spine, it's it's like they're going to struggle throughout the year if that's what they like. It's, if Foz goes down for six to eight weeks or something like that, touch wood, hope he doesn't. Very very concerning. So much so, watching on the weekend, unless Jaden Campbell plays really well, you're going to have to get Brimo back in that fullback. I hate it. Brimo at centre. Yeah, we were very unsure. Game, but Can, uh, like we were very unsure of it. Oh. You know, I don't think any of us said we we liked yeah. him there. It was more just like okay, because Campbell needs to be in the side. Put it this way, they don't score four points if he's at fullback. Mm. Can one of you answer me this? Brimo's playing centre because they want to have Tanner Boyd ready for life after Kieran Foran, right? Round one when Kieran Foran's ruled out, why on earth wouldn't you play AJ in the halves for that game just to get his hands on the football? Play him at six and Tanner at seven. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, fair point. If you, th- if you, if you are so sure that Tanner's going to be your guy after Kieran Foran, why bring him Weaver? Especially considering you had a rookie at fullback as well. So if like your spine is, is super young. Your strike. Play play your superstar in a position where he's going to get his hands on the football. And the, ironically, the only time they really looked dangerous was when Brimo got his hands on the ball from yeah. centre. And I get like, okay, if you, you know, I, I would imagine the argument from the Times would be, well, we wanted to get Brimson used to centre. Started in week two. Play some good footy week one. You're missing all your strike weapons. Why play your star out of position there as well? I just kind of – I don't think they can afford to have that mentality. It's honestly similar-ish to the Bulldogs where it's like we just want to get Critter on the centre to get used to our game plan. And then I'm like, I don't know if you've got the luxury to do that. It's the NRL. You you start slow. Comp get away from you very, very quickly. Hmm. And ironically, I'm pretty sure Brimo won their man of the match. Um, I, I tell you what, he was bloody good in defence, Brimo. Yeah. Some really good one-on-one tackles. Um, look, four and back, a feeder back. Um, who else am I blowing? Uh, Campbell back eventually. But uh, look, it's going to be a, a touch and go of whether Des holds his nerve and keeps Brimway out in the centres. Because Campbell's not back to what, round four to six, yeah. something like that? Yeah, yeah, round four. So it's going to be interesting to see if he holds his nerve to keep Brimway at centre when they clearly need him at the full, at full back. As I said, you, just, you can cop the points for round one, so be it. With all those players out, you just would like to send a bit more ticker in defence. Yeah, because they, they, it's not like they got completely dominated with possession. 48% compared to 52. Um, you know, and Keno Kinney, obviously he's still a rookie, got plenty of time to, um, you know, develop, but 13 runs, 96 metres, two tackle breaks. You know, whereas, you know, Brimo back there, I, I think he would have got through a bit more work. Um, but Kinney, heaps of potential, still a rookie, so he may grow into that role. Uh, yeah, you have a look at their... Um Errors for the game. The entire forward pack of the bench made one error. The back line made nine. Far out. And, and like me saying that I wanted Brimson back at fullback, that's got nothing to do with Keeney. I think Keeney has a very bright future. Mm. I've just been very vocal saying I think Brimson is wasted at centre. And he is the club's best fullback. <laughs> You're right. I'm sitting on the Titanic over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, he, and he's the best fullback at the club. Like, yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Without a doubt. Um, some positive, like, what I will say. I like the fact that Tino only played 58 minutes. Um, I know he did that really long stint at the start, I think, and then he got taken off and put on for a little bit. Um, I don't want Tino out, like, just working his absolute ass off playing 70 minutes and that. In the, the time that he did play, he just worked his absolute ass off. Um, and it's kind of getting to the point where you've got to look to those other forwards and go, boys, look what Tino's doing every week. And this, with Tino, I get that he's a man mountain and he's a super athlete, but a lot of the stuff he does is just pure effort. Yep. And you've got to help him out a little bit there. And he's also, you know, you've invested in him long, long term in this club. You don't want to, you don't want to burn him out by the time he's like four years out from the end of his contract. Surely. Um, so and, who I think has been a little bit underwhelming to start. I know it's only one game at trials as well. Um, Kenan Palacio, I thought he was going to go there yeah. and absolutely blow it out of the park. It's only, it's only one game uh, and trials, but um, yeah, he was a little bit underwhelming. You've obviously seen more of him, Kempi, but underwhelming for me. Defensively, so very, like, pretty poor. Yeah. It, he, I've been surprised too. I thought that he was, because I thought he was going to the Titans because he wanted more minutes mm. in a Titans four pack that's arguably a little bit easier to get in. 
compared to a Broncos one. Um, you know, it's only round one, but yeah, I definitely thought he'd be. I, I thought he'd be going there to try and almost match it with Tino, like be the the Bash Brothers mm-hmm. to a degree. Uh, now, only round one. We'll see how the season rolls on, but yeah, a little bit surprising in the trials and obviously round one. We'll say defensively, um, Cleese Haas got through a mountain of work. Forty-four tackles, only one miss. It's pretty pretty bloody good for an edge edge back row. He's starting to come together nicely. Yeah, Cleese Haas. Yeah, I think I, so too. I thought I thought defensively throughout parts last year there was uh, a, a, a number of issues there, but um, yeah, I, I was impressed with him. I, I like the move they made with Chris Randall signing him at nine for yep. the first twenty. I, I agree. I love Randall. I reckon he's such a good. Get player. him through the tough stuff. Yep. And then bring Verrills on for his silkiness through the middle there. I think it's good. And then you can leave Randall on for the next 15, 20 just to play as a middle. He's solid. He's got good leg speed, bit of a different, different body shape to the rest of their pack. I, I really like him. And he was great coming off the bench last year. Um, so, yeah, look, the, the big standout for me is just the amount of errors the backs made. You just, uh, you know, I say it all the time on the podcast, but you owe it to your forwards to keep those error counts quite low. You just owe it to them. Uh, so... Hopefully, this is all part of the mad scientist plan, Desi Hasler. Uh, but, yeah, a little disappointing. And, it's, again, it's not the really the result. It's just the, I'm not seeing a difference in this side yet, which I thought I would. Yeah. i tell you what. Jeez, you see the difference when Kieran Foran's out of this side. Ooh. Not like you think naturally in attack and the impact he has with Fafita or whoever his edge back rower is. It's defensively, though, like, he holds that, up that edge, the glue of it, so well. So get the big fella back in, then we'll reconsider. Uh, all righty. Uh, any thoughts on that game? All good. You covered it off. All Very good. comprehensive. Okay. Uh, now on to the Dolphins versus the Cowboys. Um, Cowboys probably the performance of the round, maybe. At the very least in the top tier, uh, I thought they looked absolutely outstanding. Their attack looks so slick. And there's actually uh, like almost a, a set play they have where – Basically, any time there's an offload or a breakdown in play, they get the ball straight to drink water and he throws a 20-minute cutout pass to the other side of the field. The amount of times that broke open the defense was like at least three or four times. Um, I love that just exciting rugby league where they go, nah, we're not just going to like, oh, a little offload, I'll take a run. No, nah, I'm just going to spin it 20 meters and just work something out on the other edge. Uh, drink water, he's been like my Schmokey for Dally M, like friggin' two years running. Um, he was outstanding, so silky. But their whole team, their forwards look super aggressive. Valentine Holmes was taking hit-ups off the back fence. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, that out ball for his uh, setup try for, I think, to a Talangi on Herbie Farnworth, that was like Steve Renolf areas there. That reminded me of Renolf at Suncorp hitting that beautiful out ball and just at pace. There's nothing Herbie can do. Great stuff from the Cowboys. Matt, I thought uh, Scott Drinkwater was – you know, good in this game, but you know, I love that they scored 43 points and Drinky didn't have a try assist, a line break assist. He, nice. did, he had no stat. They, they, they sort of, like, he played well, but they, they weren't relying on him, which yeah. is what I felt like the Cowboys were getting into areas mm. of, uh, which I thought was tremendous. Val Holmes was absolutely off his head. Um, <laughs> have you Waver. seen a centre run harder than Val Holmes? <laughs> Not once, twice, three times, every, every single run. time. Yeah. And it's just like that, in behind the rock, if you want to shot me, like, have a go. Have a oh. go. Because, like, that's a perfect recipe to get absolutely waxed by a forward. Just going, oh, okay, got an outside back run like that. We, we sat here about eight months ago or so talking about mid-season when Labart played a game or two and we said, you know, we think he'll be the guy to replace Peter Hickel eventually. And, mate, his first touch yesterday. Oh. It's one dummy of the best individual tries I've seen in ages. The dummy flick. Oh. How, do you, how do you know the dummy flick? Jeez. Crazy. The candy. And he got, he got the hammer hook line and... Uh, Hook, line, and sinker with it, didn't he? Oh, mate. And, you know, we'll speak about it, but Hammer just – you have to take the man with the ball. You He'll have learn to. from it. Yeah, He'll I hope it. so. But, uh, look, we all love Hammer for his big plays. Like, we love that. Just got to pick your moments a little bit. Uh, because if – they actually had the defenders for that. If he takes that with the ball, I think Townsend gets tackled off the ball anyway. Yeah. Um, anyway, we'll get, back, we'll get to that when we get to the, the Dolphins. Um, Another thing that I thought uh, really interesting, both sides did it, is identifying the fullback at A defender on the line and just sending yep. big, big boppers at him. And I reckon we might see the beginnings of a change of the way teams defend on their line because if you run that line properly, you should score yeah, every single time. 
every single time. There's nothing that the fullback's going to do about it. And we saw it set plays happen twice. Uh, I think we might see that quite a bit more often throughout the year where defenders just go, all right, we'll send a nine, we'll send Kerricher. That's a try. Easy easy six points for us. A good us. one of doing it is, like, the Kerr one was great, but it's... Um if you've got a crafty enough dummy half, and you saw sort of the Dragons trying to do it with, with Sully, particularly in, in the second trial, but mm. just like bringing a bloke under with a full head of steam, and if they can isolate the fullback there, particularly some of the smaller ones in the game, you can't stop it. You just can't. Like, it's just physically, it's almost like asking a front rower to be able to run down a really fast yeah. winger. It just happen. doesn't happen. Um, what do you think, Guru? Uh, mate, I just wanted to point out one guy, Kyle Felt. He's obviously been in the league for a long time. Um, you have a look through his career. The first 10 years, never averaged over 140 run metres per game. The last two years since uh, Semi Valame has arrived up there and he's putting pressure on him. Last year, he averaged 163 and he opened up yesterday with 205 run metres. And he's taken tough carries, Kyle. I Felt. tell you what, and we'll just say it really quickly. We're not going to, um, this year, we're going to try to be very pro ref. Penalty try. Oh, <laughs> oh fuck. Yeah. But then they don't give him that try, even though the rule is if you still have contact with the ball, it's a try. They almost like they did it to even it up. What? Doesn't make sense. How was that a penalty try? Yeah, that one was inside. And then the felt one, like I get it was falling out of his hand, but the rule is if you still have contact, yeah. it's a try. And also it was sent up as a try. You're telling me there's definitive evidence to suggest Anyway, sorry guys. So bad. Just Can I jump out. in really quickly and have one little complaint as well? Yeah. And it's from a previous game, but and he's had a, gr a great game, but I hate the rule. Tyros Sloan got given a force drop out the other day for one of the great drop balls I've ever fucking seen. Just happened to get his foot to it before he hit the ground. I hate that rule. Mm, yeah. If you've got no control of the football, it's a fucking knock on. It has been for a hundred years. Someone did it in this yesterday's game as well. I can't remember who it was, but they completely dropped it. You know, they by the end, by letter of the law, by the I think it was drinky, drinky, by the end, drinky, and he got his boot to it in the end, and like it ended up being okay. There was intent to kick it eventually, but he clean dropped it. I'm like, it's not right. While we're here, boys, I got another complaint just quickly. <laughs> just get him off the chest early. <laughs> Tarpanet dives at the try line, and then Leo Thompson gets done for a crusher. <laughs> oh my god, bro, yeah. what the hell is he Put supposed to do? Put on report. It's like. What do you want him to do? Just let him <laughs> score? Like, it, there's got to be some responsibility. Like, he's the attacker is diving it. Anyway, sorry, guys. The re Look, if I'm being honest, the refing overall was actually pretty good. It was great, weekend. yeah. It was pretty good. But, yeah, anyway. Sorry. No more bets. We're done. Apologies. We're Apologies. Done. Had to just get it off my chest. Um, I can't keep yelling at my newborn son. Going, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what the hell, Randy? What's going on there? Well, what were Rain's thoughts on the penalty trial? <laughs> Filthy. <laughs> Filthy. <laughs> Toys out the cot sort of stuff. Toys out the cot sort of stuff. <laughs> Uh, just like his father. Um, anyway, back to the Cowboys. Uh, and also RIP Todd Payton's goading. Um, Labor, how bloody good is he? And he's so unassuming. If you, if, you sat him, if you sat him next to like, we'll just say Valentine Holmes, for example, like this almost Ferrari looking centre, yeah. Labor, just a battler looking centre. He looks super strong, quite quick, great footwork. Like, I mean, everything. He was outstanding in one of his, like, what, his fourth or fifth NRL game? Yeah, I uh, you know, I pointed him out halfway through last year because I really liked him. I didn't realise he was that good. Fucking unbelievable. I didn't he was anywhere near that good. That was, he, he, he blew it away early. That was, um, and, you know, going up against Tessie Newell, pretty experienced centre. Mm. Gave him an absolute bath <sighs> in that game. Well, what's crazy is that that dummy flick pass, like, do you know how in tune you have to be with the game to know to go all oh, his body like, like his body shape is looking like he's going to intercept then pull it back in like that's insane that, that is happening at you know microseconds that decision and reading the body language of hammer going oh shit he's about to go because basically nine point like nine out of ten players throw the flick pass because they're committed to it hammer just goes Boop, thanks for coming it's a like that is so in tune with the game his um, other line break where he just went bang off the right foot. Sean, Sean O'Sullivan got caught in the chair, straight through. Um, mate, he – and what I uh, really, really liked and – and we'll talk about the Dolphins because I do agree their fifth play was their real killer. I think there was like four or five tries on the fifth play. But you have to give it to uh, Todd Payton and the Cowboys. That's a clear tactic of identifying uh, wingers dropping back 
way too deep, way too early and saying, we're just going to run it on the fifth play because they scored multiple tries on it. That's great coaching from Peyton. I know it's, it's very early days and the Cowboys were very impressive, but you look at guys like Zach Lobart, you look at guys like Finney Fuiaki, even like a Sam McIntyre, who I thought was really good. And when you look back at teams that are very successful and win premierships, they've always got a couple of guys that jump out of the ground that are getting paid unders for their ability. Uh, and the Cowboys look like they've got a few of those guys in this squad. I look at that two ways, Guru. And could have been more impressive yesterday. That being said, even the Cowboys' defence at times was a little bit questionable. But if they can keep that up, mm. blokes like McIntyre, Finney Fuiaki, they're in a great position. With Hess gone, Leilua gone, maybe their middles could be a little bit light on. Look, I even look at... Tiam Lolo just looks out of favour. 21 it, it, minutes. Played 21 minutes. Played the first stint, didn't come back on. Again, he's a bit older. Maybe there's niggling injuries and they didn't feel the need to put him back on. But... Mm. Everything you read into that club and town, Malolo, Peyton, whatever, it just looked like when I mean, he literally got the captaincy taken off him in favour of um, you know Cotter and that did in this year. Just maybe light on on middles. I mean, if those boys play like they did yesterday, yeah, though, if they can I keep mean, it up, still yeah, sure. Bit, bit of, no, no uh, McKayley killed it in the trial as well. Yeah, uh, 18th man. He was 18th man. Yeah. Todd Payne, if you want to get him in there, he's in my super coach team, so that'd be great. Uh, <laughs> they've got a little bit. They got, got a couple floating around. And you like you look at their spine, all Origin level players or a Premiership winning seven. Um, but I tell you what, doesn't Nanai and Lukey look on? <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> like that is scary. Like the fact that they've got two back rowers that aren't just like really good defenders or just really good attackers. We're talking beasts with footwork, with a motor. Like each one could be the premier back rower at their club. And in three years' time. It could be Finay Fuiaki. And also, Lukey is like, what, 22, 23 max. Nanai, I think he's 21. Like, we're, we're not talking, you know, 26, 27. Two yeah. of the best line running edge back rolls, most destructive back rolls in the competition with Scott Drinkwater flying out the back. Ooh. Just on Jason Tamalolo, um, do we. I think there's a world where they got 20 minutes into that game, they took him off for his sub, and maybe the coach went, you know what? We don't need to use him in this game. We're good. Maybe I'll just leave him Get off. minutes into McIntyre, etc. Yeah, I, I think there's a chance that's how that might have played out. Maybe, but the, the thing is, it's like, you know, I feel like the whole initial, I guess, discussion in regards to Tamalola and Peyton was he needs to do all the hard stuff, you know, the defence and, you know, all the little things in his game, we need to fix that. And so, like, to go, oh, mate, you've had enough, bring you off. I feel like that's almost counter to... The idea of trying to make him into this well-rounded, I don't know. Maybe we're just reading too much into it. Maybe. I don't know. They won, They bloody won 43 to 18. You've got a guy, an ageing Tamalola that's put his body through absolute hell for eight years. Maybe they're just going, you know. Look, in, to your point, Kuru, it, if you're trying to win a premiership, it would be smart because you, you don't want Tamalolo breaking down by the end of the year. Yep. You want him peaking by the end of the year and, hit, and getting him 20 minutes first game, 25 the second game, and then the first after 10 rounds is up to 30. And by the time he hits finals footy, he's hitting around the 40, 50 minute mark. Which maybe. is like I'd be doing the same thing with uh, 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 Josh Papali in the games that I need him. True. I'm relying on him. When I don't need him, I'm saying, mate, just. Yeah. And, and, and you're probably right, mate. And, and I don't disagree with that. And I, look, I do like the idea of getting minutes into someone like McIntyre, who's now going to have to play a decent role for them this season. And I know Tamlo has sort of had niggling injuries in recent years, but like he's still only 30 years old. I know. He's not, it's not a 34 year old we're talking about. Do you think that maybe because he's been such a physical player that he does have quite a lot of niggles because of the impacts, like such impact over so long? And you're right, he's only 30, but mate, that body's been through more than yeah. just about anyone else in the history of the game. Like, like, it was a three-year period where he was running for more than we have ever fucking seen. And he was playing, like, crazy minutes. Yeah. it's So maybe maybe they've looked at it, they've, you know, the sports science, all that kind of stuff, and said, the only way you're going to ever get him back to his best yeah. is by, like, not putting him through these mental seasons. We need you playing 55, 50 to 55 in round 27 and week one of the finals. Yeah. Yep. Two, I also thought it was really good, and his stat sheet doesn't line up, but I just thought on their online defence, God, he made a couple of really important tackles. Your boy Griffin Nee. I love Griffin Nee. He was he was great. I mean, yeah. As I said, stat sheet doesn't light up the world, but twenty three tackles, zero misses, is pretty bloody good in the middle there. Just some of the tackles he made were mm. really important ones. He's a much bigger body than you actually give him credit mm. for. Like in contact, he you usually wins that battle. Um, but let's talk about Nanai. A try, a try assist. You know, fourteen runs, one hundred and twenty one meters, forty post contact. 
Is this the best he's ever looked, you reckon? The most well-rounded? Mate, the stat that stands out for me there is the 14 runs. Love that. Yeah, we spoke about it last year. I, I think I think we got to like round eight or something last year, Timmy. He'd had, he'd had like 22 hit-ups or something like so that. Bad, something, it? There was, it was guys who having two and three runs. Yeah, it's the same having 14. You love, you love that. And then, yeah, look across the other edge. 16 runs for Lukey, 146 metres, 43 post-contact. 20 tackles, zero misses. And then Fine Fuyaki came on for 30 minutes and had nine hit-ups. I wonder, maybe that's where Peyton's going to go, okay, I can actually get my metres from my edge back rowers coming in, taking hit-ups. So I'm just going to bring, because even, um, even McLean, only 33 minutes. Yeah. So the starting front rowers only really played 50 minutes together. Or, you know, we'll yeah, well, I, I think as well, didn't, did he and Lukey shift to the middle at one point as well when Fine Fuyaki yes, came on? Yes, he, yes, he sure did. He did. Yeah, yep. yeah. So, I mean, uh, Jake Granville played 42 minutes. Like, hey. I just, I, 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 I fathom to believe that. You fathom? Or I fathom. You don't yeah. fathom. One of my great sentences. Um, <laughs> I'm not buying that when they get into games that are tight and they need to win, Granville's going to play 42 minutes and Tam Lolo's going to play 20. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. When you look at it, you go, okay, we're already winning this match. The key to a long, good season is getting minutes in blokes that probably won't get minutes in big matches. Fair. Look, it's hard to be critical. Of it. If you want to be critical of the Cowboys, it's just that 18 points that they leaked. But outside of that, I thought they looked absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Dearden, once again, he was outstanding. Uh, Jordan McLean have one stint? Or, t- or is that 33 minutes for two stints? I can't say on my... Uh, let me have a bone. look. While you're looking that up, is Tuolangi the most underrated winger in the game? Yep, right up there. Like Two stints, McLean. Okay. I feel like with Tuolangi, and apologies if I'm saying the last name wrong, um, you talk about the best wingers in the game, he doesn't get brought up enough. But he's done it at every level. Mm. He's played extremely well in origin. He's played extremely well for a couple of years in the Cowboys. Um, played for Australia as well. Like, What else does he need to do to be considered one of the best wingers in the competition? And Valame is not even in the side, and he's in the exact same category for me. Bit of live commentary, Kempi. Australia on the verge of chasing down 279 against New Zealand. Uh oh. We were in absolute all sorts. Alex Carey, 97 not out, three to win, three wickets in hand. Singing to the choir, One mate. Of the all time knocks, and could we be about to bring up. Oh! Don't do that to me. I was going to say, if you've early crowed this. I haven't early crowed, I'm just explaining the match situation. <laughs> Timmy? You got to give me credit, mate. I've had the live stream of the cricket on this whole time in front of me. <laughs> I never doubted you, mate. So don't worry about giving me updates about the bloody cricket. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Or do we nearly just get a, a wicket taken? As I was wrapping Kerry, one just popped and he almost gloved it straight up. Oh my god, two to win. So we lost one. No, no, two runs to win, three wickets to go. We should be right. Oh, so we still got three wickets. Cut Paddy Cummins. Oh, oh Paddy like Blue, he's not letting us down. Twenty-eight not out. He's fast becoming one of the world's best batsmen. <laughs> This is unbelievable. Anyway, <laughs> great stuff, great. Actually, speaking of that, um, super coach. Yeah, I beat Tim this week. I'm what sure happened? You'll be shocked to know that. What happened? Now we both had pretty average weeks. I'll tell you what happened. Your mate Brandon P. Kura got HA three minutes into the game yeah. in Vegas and screws oh, all. Oh, you know what's crazy is I said not to go P. Kura. Oh, you did. Guess who I did say to go? The great Burbo. We followed you into it. We got Burbo. Yeah. Is there a thank you coming or is it just fucking, you're just going to take my goods? <laughs> the and silence fucking, is deafening from yeah, that half. It is, the, uh, it is. We go yeah. fucking, we've been two and a half, three hours nearly. Not even a single thank you, Kempi. Yeah. Sam Walker had a great game. I, look, I can lead you to water. I can't make you drink. <laughs> I can't make you drink. It's a bit of a weird week in Supercoach for everyone out there. Kempi, all the, uh, all the big guns all went very, very low mm. this week. Listen, if you didn't captain your side with Zach Lomax round one, <laughs> you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> don't, so don't, don't complain when you don't know rugby league, all right? Uh, I try to lead you to the water. You don't want to drink. It's okay. It's okay. Not all of us are cut out for the super coach fucking, I don't know. Caper. Actually, yeah. the... Uh, the one who flew under the radar, Matty the water boy, huge first week. Because he listens. <laughs> he listens to fuck. Who do you think I'd be talking about to him every single day? It's not about work. It's about fucking super coach. <laughs> do, so you do you one out of all three? Matty got us. There you go, eh? There you go. Have you, aren't like you the, super coach as well? Yeah, I'm super coach. What did you walk away with points wise? 829 or something. 829? Yeah. I think I was 890. Yeah. I'm just still loading it. It's much here. like whoever's leading the um, the office tipping comp after the week one. You, you know they'll be at the bottom by the end of the season. Ooh, bit of chat there. That's, that's loser talk. Very spiteful, <laughs> very spiteful. Um, 
Anyway, back into it. Cowboys, uh, look, heaps of depth. Look, oh, maybe you could say in the halves, there's, there could be like if someone goes down. But Townsend didn't, both shown to be quite uh, durable. Another, look, I feel like I'm just saying every bloke played well, but every bloke did. I thought Reese Robson was outstanding. Great, great signs for New South Wales if he keeps playing this way. And, you know, we keep going about this split hooker role, you know, c- creeping more and more into teams and team structures. Doing it in 80 minutes still, yep. week in, week out. Yep, and played in quality, you know. He, so 80 minutes, and granted, they won 43-18. We would like to see this if they lose, but 42 tuckers, only two misses. Um, and I wonder whether, you know, you've got Jane Granville and almost... Toddy Payton just keeps him there just like if he starts blowing out Reese Robson, then that's when he puts him on, maybe. Mm. Um, but anyway, we'll see what happens. But outside of that, incredible stuff from the Cowboys. This team on paper should challenge for a premiership. And at the moment, they've essentially done all they can for that. Now, on to the Dolphins. Um, we done it. we done it. Oh. Uh-huh. What? We chased them down. Chased them down? Yeah. There you go. Never in doubt. Live. Yeah, Live from yeah. Block Studios. That's unbelievable. So that's 2 0. We've won. 2 0 sweep. The old uh, two, the two game series. How, I'll tell how you good what. are they? Um, Paddy Cummins' resume is just getting longer <sighs> and longer yeah. and longer. How many knocks in the last two years has he had that has won us, won us games? Gee. And like also just the amount of series that he's won. He's oh, phenomenal. yeah. You know, fuck, unbelievable. Uh, okay, on to the Dolphins. Um, look. The, the thing that I was a bit surprised at is I'd been hearing that Bennett had been, you know, having had a, a massive off-season, pre-season, <clears throat> rearing these guys for a big start. But they they obviously – they looked to me like a side that – I wouldn't say underdone because they sometimes their attack looks slick, but just looked a little clunky and probably not as uh, ready for round one as the Cowboys. And obviously they lost. But um, obviously their fifth – Tackle defence wasn't the best. Halves pairing, still unsure on that. That's going to be my biggest question throughout the season is, does this halves pairing have enough to get them into the top eight? Was a bit surprised at their forward pack struggling to go with the Cowboys forward pack. I'm Look, I'm not super concerned with the Dolphins. Uh, a few things they need to fix up. Like if they put it this way, if they fix up the fifth tackle, set uh, options in regards to in defense and also the hammer goes for just the one percent uh, sorry the the high percentage play rather than the one percent you're looking at a much tighter game uh but definitely not the, the start you'd want at the dolphins yeah i expected more from the dolphins i spoke about them in trials that i uh i knew you know wayne doesn't put too much emphasis into trials and whatnot but i expected them to come out fast uh to start the season but man, i <sighs> I don't know how much to read into the Dolphins' pack or if the Cowboys' pack is just that good. Like, They did get quite dominated. They were pretty ordinary. Yeah. Dolphins. they ugh, Cowboys were good, but the Dolphins' defence was so leaky. Like, The ruck was so quick. I think there's a chance this Cowboys' forward pack is just the proper real deal. Maybe. Uh, we'll see over the next few weeks. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know, the Dolphins' pack, it did look like an aging pack to me mm. in that game. Um, I thought that Flegler was pretty good in his minutes. Jeez, that, that ball that Jesse Bromwich threw to him to score that oh, try. Fuck, that's so classy. Good. Like, it looks so simple, but at pace and with a guy you've only spent a couple of weeks with, uh, that, that's incredible to execute that at a high click like that. And if an aging kick, uh, an aging pack is an issue, Guru, which, look, between Jesse Bromwich, Kofusi, Kenny Bromwich, Marky Nichols, Jared Wallace, etc. If that is an issue, they've now lost Ke- Connelly Lemuelu. Such a big fan of him. Played 37 minutes, potentially out for a while. Kenny mm. Bromwich, what an awesome replacement to come in and start on the edge, but you have a very old pack on your hands. Yeah, well, I, I start to wonder if you and Aitken might be the better fit there. I like it, to be honest. I like it. Yeah, I don't mind it. Uh, also, shout out to Tommy Gilbert. Um, oh. His ACL uh, surgery has been pushed back a few months. Uh, they haven't confirmed how many months. Caught a, got a blood clot in his calf that went to his lungs, I think. Had to get that sorted. So, mate, in the wars. Uh, really, really feel for him. But, um, you know, he's still relatively young. So, hopefully he can pull through and, and we'll see him back in action, uh, hopefully next year. It's also, like, oh, obviously awful for Tom Gill. We wish him all the best. But, fuck, it's tough for the Dolphins. When you come into the competition, you manage to identify that he's one of the best forwards in the game. And then you have back-to-back seasons like this. Fuck, it makes it difficult. Yeah. 
No, like we're talking about an aging pack. He's the young guy they identified as one of the best in the comp. They've absolutely nailed it, and they've just been dicked time and time again since. Yeah, it's tough because he's, you know, I know Flegler ended up coming in mm. and become their kind of key signing, but he was their key young origin signing. Yep. For some reason, I can't find the friggin' play the ball speed here because uh, I would love to know. Oh, here we go. So that, that's what's crazy is like, so the Cowboys had a three average of a 3.07 second play this ball speed. Dolphins had 3.16, so it wasn't like a crazy difference. It, was like, it looked like the, it though. It was such a fast paced game. Like it looked like touch footy at some stages and just the attack was so open. Like, it was a great game to watch. Mm, so, uh, so there could be an argument to be made that it suits a younger Cowboys pack oh, compared definitely. to an older one. Whereas if they could somehow find a way to slow the play of the ball down and get into that grind, which the Wayne Bennett sides can do, maybe that would have yeah. suited the Dragons. And, and that's it. Uh, like with Dolphins. the Cowboys, uh, we we're all super high on them and, and all had them as big improvers coming into this year. So this, I don't think this sort of majorly surprised anyone, uh, but I do want to see it against a you know, far better defensive outfit than what we saw of the Dolphins. What are you smirking at? No, we're talking about you, not to you. No, nah, just Schuster's good to go. He'll be in, in reserve grade. So we're just looking at the, the post about it. Nice. That's all. Good That's stuff, boys. Bit of yeah, mail okay. there, bit of breaking news. Breaking oh, news. As long as it doesn't affect Berber, I don't care. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it not affect Berber. <laughs> uh, shows you what good position Manly are in. That, yeah. You know, guy like Schuster comes through reserve grade. Um, Met Berbo in the States, told him I drafted him this year. Did not give a fuck. <laughs> 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 He's like, oh, yeah, Matt. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, Hammer, look, the positives for Hammer, the positives, glass half full, he had 20 runs. So I love that. That's what you want from your fullback. Uh, but just, you know, a few crucial errors he's just going to make because they just can't afford that because he's such a key player. Uh, so hopefully he can sort them out. I will say Tessie um, trialed really well. Unfortunately, probably didn't have his mm. best game. Um, you know, it wasn't terrible by any stretch, but yeah, he trialed probably a lot better than he played. Um, what do you, what, anyone else for you boys in the, the Dolphin side? Honestly, it's tough. Yeah. They, they just got rolled through the middle and no one really jumped out. I'll tell you who I do like, this Maxi Plath that came off the bench. He's got something about him. I think, what do you have, th 31 tackles, zero missed, a couple of good hit-ups. Um, Josh Kerr was good, obviously scored a meaty, but... I mean, he's not a great rap on Plath that he's beaten out guys like you and Aitken and Jared Wallace for a bench watch. That's what Wayne Bennett thinks of him. Yeah. The thing is, like, I, I really feel like they could have used you and Aiken yesterday. I know. Yep. You know, quite an explosive forward that gets through a lot of work, doesn't give you many poor games. Hot day, fast track, yeah. good game. Like, could have been so, great, yeah, man. look, definitely not panic stations at all for the Dolphins. You can never count out a Wayne side, but look, he didn't seem too, con too concerned in his post, -com post press conference. Um, but I guess when you compare that to the start last year for the Dolphins, it's definitely night and day. You know, it last all, year you come out beat yeah. the Roosters. All these sides who had poor round one performances, I'm, you know, you, you're not overly concerned by them. If they come out next week, you know, we're backs are against the wall a little bit and they need to lift and they turn up with a similar performance, then you start to ask mm. questions and get worried. The, the biggest questions I have for the teams that lost round one is just like their identity. Did they play to who the culture that we've known them to be. That's when I get concerned. Like, that's why a little bit concerned about the Titans because it didn't look like they were playing Desi mm. footy. Uh, a little bit concerned about the Knights because they weren't playing that Steel City footy. Um, but yeah, look, as we said at the start of the show, guys, it's round one. It is such a long year. These things take time. Different coaches have different approaches. Some start slow, some start fast. Uh, so I wouldn't be too concerned with the, the Dolphins. Uh, the, only, uh, the only concern I have is, is just this halves pairing. Will it click quick enough for them to challenge in the eight? Well, that's going to be the tough thing for them this week coming uh, round two. They take on the Dragons, who looked pretty good last week, obviously. Dragons outsiders in that too. There's a bit of value getting around this week. Um, but then round three, they have a bye. So if they go 0-2 into a bye, it's not ideal. Well, I'll tell you, I will be concerned. If Dragons go up and, and do a number on him or yeah, go, up, go up and do a number on him, that is concerning for me because... It's not like the Dragons are a top four side. Um, now, if they lose the Dragons I, and it's like a close game and they both play quite solidly, I, you know, that's not panic stations at all. Um, so it would be a really good barometer for them to know where they're really at right now in the season, this Dragons game. Because um, you've got a, a, a lower tier in quotation side that's in form. You know, whereas, like, let's say they were playing Panthers next week and they got beaten substantially. 
very hard to judge like you know where yeah. are they that's one of the premiership yeah. sides whereas this dragons game will give us a really good indication of where they're at right now in the season we'll be up there as well we will be don't forget between 245 345 new south wales time live ko show we've got two origin players we'll all be there cannot wait also don't forget to watch the uh fight on wednesday they're going to be up sam goodman returns against no relations no relation no relations <laughs> the two different things but they're both on ko yeah uh, anything else in that game, boys? All good, mate. All good, I think. Okay, I think uh, I think Guru's about to pass out, so let's get through these <laughs> tips very quickly. <laughs> All right, uh, face music round two. Uh, content creator uh, Darby's everywhere you look in this one, so um, <laughs> buckle up. Kicking off with the uh, the Packer up boys, Darby. Start with uh, Broncos versus the Rabbitohs on Thursday night. Broncos dollar forty two. Rabbitohs 289. The line is seven and a half points. Who do you like in this one, Kempi? Go on, Broncos. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go Brisbane. Broncos. I'll go South. And Broncos for me. Uh, all right, Friday, um, Sharkies versus the Dogs at 6 p.m. Sharkies dollar 32. Dogs 341. The line eight and a half points here. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going, I'm going Sharkies. Mm hmm. Don't mind that line, though. With, we're seeing Sharky's mm. attack being a bit clunky and Doggy's looking to bounce back. I think it was this game last year. Canterbury went down to Melbourne and shocked them mm. in round two. Uh, I'm going to go the Sharkies, though. Sharkies? Yeah, Sharks for me, too. Yep, Sharks for me as well. Now, this next one, very interesting. Just quickly, just quickly, because we all went Sharkies. We'll go line then, all right? Okay. Sharkies to cover. For me. Sharkies to cover, yeah. What's the line? Eight and a half. Sharks to cover. I'll, go, I'll just go 13 plus then. Sharks 13 plus, you Ooh. Yeah, I'll go Sharks to cover. Okay. Uh, well, next that up. didn't fucking help much, did it? <laughs> <laughs> Penrith versus the Eels. Now, Penrith, $1.38. Eels, $3.06. What's now, the line? Line, seven and a half points for this Ooh. one. Eels beat the Panthers twice last year. Bear that in mind. Um, the only thing to consider maybe is uh, Moses maybe under a bit of a... No, I think he's been cleared to play. He's all good, yeah. He's all good. Yeah, all good, but it wasn't kicking. Anyway, yeah, something to think fair. about there. Something to think about. Um, I'm going Panthers to bounce back. Yep. I'll take Parramatta with the start. Ooh. I'm tipping Panthers to win. Eels with the line. Yep. Yeah, I'm the exact same. I, I will do that as well. Panthers to cover. Panthers to cover. I don't give Five a shit. Five or seven and a half. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I scored a... All right. Some of us get rugby league, some of us don't. You All just right. remember those words. Now, the next game of the, uh, <laughs> the content um, derby, we've got the... Uh, Cricket playbook um, derby here. Uh, Camp Raiders versus West Tigers. Raiders dollar forty six. Tigers two dollars seventy three. Value there for the Tigers. Line seven and a half points. Love that. I'm going uh, Raiders to win, but Tigers with the line. Yep. Uh, yeah, Raiders to win. Tigers to cover. I'll, I'm the same. Raiders nah, win. Tigers. Cover. I'll go Raiders. Raiders. And uh, Tigers head head for me. Okay. Showing our stripes to kick off the season. No Refresh courage. I, was, I would have thought a Tigers 13 plus was getting thrown out, but clearly. <laughs> Let's not get carried away. Okay. First game of the year. Okay. Just easing it. You got to, as you said, for the Knights, you've got to build into a season. Okay, okay. fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, all right. Then we've got the Cowboys, $1.42. Knights, $2.90. Line seven and a half in that one. Bearing in mind how good the Cowboys looked here. I am going. Oh, I'm definitely going Cowboys. Yep. Oh. They probably bounce. I'm, I'm thinking the Cowboys 13 plus, maybe. No, I don't have the guts. I don't have the courage. Cowboys just to cover as well. Yep. Uh, I'm going to go Cowboys to win, uh, and I'll take Knights with the start. Okay. We'll go Cowboys win uh, and to cover. Yep. Cowboys to win and to cover. For me Cowboys too. win and cover for me as well. Storm, Warriors, Storm, dollar thirty eight. Warriors, three dollars and nine cents. Line again, seven and a half. What are seven and a half lines this week? Um, Storm to win, Warriors to cover. Give me Warriors head to head. Oh, they win this one. I'm going to go with you, Roo. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I okay. can three bucks is an enormous Great price. Great value there. Yep. Uh, now I'll go Storm and Storm with the line. Oof. I think I might go Warriors head to head as well. Okay. Then we have got the uh, the about even derby here. Uh, Manly <laughs> versus the Roosters. Manly two dollars and two cents. Roosters dollar eighty two. Line one and a half points. <sighs> it's a tough one. Um, Roosters Roosters to cover. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'll go the Chooks. I'm going Manly. Yep. Yeah, I'm tipping Manly at Brookie. Manly for me as well. Uh, and then we've got the boys on tour, Derby. Uh, Dolphins, $1.85. Uh, Dragons, $1.98. The line, if, if you want me to uh, divulge, half a point. So probably let it through the keeper there. 
Yeah, I'm going. I'm going dragons. Yep. Yeah, dragons for me. Dragons. Uh dragons. Hate say dragons. Ooh. Thanks for the hospitality, uh, dolphins. But I'll go the dragons. <laughs> 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 we need a show cancel. <laughs> oh no. Um, yeah. All right. We, did we do enough different ones to uh, uh, differentiate? Yeah, there was plenty, was? Okay. plenty of differences there. Cool. Because I was going to no say, no one took the Africa Tigers. Africa so. Um, bit of egg on your face there when they do the Raiders next week. <laughs> All righty, that's Face the Music brought to you by Sportsbet. A massive thank you. As always, guys, thanks for listening and we'll go and fuck ourselves. Thank you. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.